What's up, family? God bless you all in the mighty name of Jesus. Can y'all hear me good? I can see the live stream. I want y'all to start spamming that fire emoji if you guys can hear me good. What's up, Jesus over Jezebel? Jesus over Jezebel. We got these shirts on our website. Y'all can go grab one. Jesus over Jezebel. Hey, family, I'm going to be exposing that witch for the next five days. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. And Saturday, we're going to be having a mass deliverance. Again, Saturday, we're going to be having a mass deliverance at the, the, the ROC in Central Florida here in Apopka. If you need deliverance from whatever you need deliverance from, if you need deliverance, healing, if you need a miracle, if you've been dealing with something and you know you need deliverance, now is the time to come. Saturday is going to be dedicated to strictly miracles. It's going to be a miracle service, deliverance, healing. The gospel will be preached, soul saved. I'm going to be focused strictly on casting out demons and healing the sick, but, but really, really focused on deliverance and really, really focused on casting out that Jezebel spirit. Many de demons will be casted out, but this Saturday is the time to come to the rock for real. If you've been thinking about coming, get your plane ticket for real. Come pull up this Saturday. It's going to be powerful. Again, Jesus over Jezebel, that wicked witch. You see, this this shirt is Jezebel being casted off of that, that balcony. If you read the book of Kings, if you've ever read the book of Kings, you know what I'm talking about. She got casted off of the balcony and fed to the dogs. And man, the Bible talks about in the book of Revelation not to toler tolerate that witch. Man, she's running rampant in the churches. She's running rampant in the world. It's crazy. I'm going to get into a five-part series on teaching, um, exposing that witch and teaching you how to overcome her. So first and foremost, before I begin, I want you guys to put the city and state that you guys live in. City and state. I'm telling you, this. you want to share this live stream with all your family, your friends. Let's run this thing up, man, for real. I want this to reach the nations. I want this to reach as many people as possible because a lot of people are dealing with that spirit and they don't even know why. A lot of people are dealing with that spirit and don't even know why they are or how they are or even if they are. I'm going to be exposing that spirit. Today, we're going to be talking about the characteristics of Jezebel, part one. Again, this is a five-part series. We got people all the way from London, Fort Lauderdale, Myrtle Beach, Brownsville, Texas, Elizabeth, New Jersey. We got Phoenix in the house, Moreno Valley, California. We got Orlando, Florida. If, you, if, you're, if you're in Orlando, you need to come to the church in Apopka. Hallelujah. And yes, we should be already shipping them out internationally. So even if you're in a different country, still go on there. Um, if not, um, if we don't have the option for that, please message our merch. Um, I mean, our admin. I, I'll actually text them right now because we need to be sending it out internationally. They're actually watch, listening right now. Make sure you guys jot that down. We need to get that thing internationally sh shipped. All our merch should be. Cali, Michigan. New Orleans. Dominican Republic, Texas. Where are you from? Utah, Eustis, Florida, Long Beach, California, hallelujah, Anaheim, Cali, Nebraska, we got the nations in the house, AZ, Sweden, Jamaica, Czech Republic, Germany, Norway, Quebec, Odessa, Texas, Melbourne, Australia, we have the nations in the house. It is 11.48 a.m. where I'm at right now. Again, this is going to be a five-part series on exposing the spirit of Jezebel. Some of you might need to take notes. Make sure you have a piece of paper and a pen, a notepad and a pen. Get ready. We're going to be exposing that witch for real. Cape Town, South, South Africa. We got Broward in the house. Chicago, Canada. Hallelujah. Again, this Saturday service. Doors open up at 6.30 p.m. It's going to be a mass deliverance service. We're going to be casting out Jezebel and many other spirits. We got South Africa again in the house. Lebanon. Uh, Lebanon, Illinois, I believe. We got India. Negaland, India. Guyana. 
Kentucky, UK. Praise the Lord, man. We got the nations in the house. It's about to get real. If you don't know where, this, where the church is, you can check my website. You can check all my social medias for the RROC, the Remnant Revival Outreach Center. It's in Apopka, Florida. The address is there. Make sure to pull up this Saturday. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. It's going to be powerful. People are going to get delivered and set free from demons. Altars are going to be destroyed. Covenants, demonic covenants are going to be broken by the blood of Jesus. Many people are going to leave with freedom, generational freedom, bloodlines wiped clean by the blood of Jesus Christ. You don't want to miss it. It's going to go down Saturday. Pull up, fly in. I'm telling you, it's going to be powerful. Again, we have the Jesus over Jezebel shirts. You can check it out on the website, but I'm going to get straight into this teaching. Part one, exposing the Jezebel spirit. We're going to be talking about recognizing the characteristics of this witch. Everyone put in the chat, Jezebel is a witch because she is a witch. She's a witch that wants that wanted to be a prophetess, but she can't. She wants to prophesy. She wants to be a prophetess, but she can't. She won't repent. She's, she's evil. She's wicked. She's rebellious. Everyone put in the chat, Jezebel is a witch because she is. This is a very important message, not only for the body of Christ, for the saints, but also for church leaders in the body of Christ, because Jezebel has been has infiltrated the body of Christ. She has infiltrated churches and brought pastors down, apostles, prophets, evangelists, teachers. The Jezebel spirit has brought down so many marriages. The Jezebel spirit has killed people. I'm talking about this Jezebel spirit is wicked and we're going to expose that which I have a righteous anger. I have a righteous anger towards that witch. And the Lord has released me to do this teaching. Five-part series. She's a, she's a very destructive influence within the church. This insidious spirit seeks to undermine pastoral authority. She loves to undermine pastoral, pastoral authority. You know why? Because Jezebel doesn't like to submit. Jezebel does not like authority. She doesn't like being told what to do because she wants to lead. That's why she used to lead her husband, Ahab. So whenever you see someone come into the church and they, especially someone dealing with that spirit, usually woman, and when they, and it, it could be men too, they come into the church and they want to go straight to the top. You know what spirit's operating. They're new to the church, just been there and they want to just prophesy out of nowhere. Now they want to be prophetic and, 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 and give everybody advice, but they want to undermine the, the leadership. They don't have honor. They're manipulative. They, they control. They're very seductive. Jezebel spirits love to sow discord amongst brethren. Whenever you see a, 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 a person come into the church and they start gossiping, slandering, and causing division, that is a Jezebel spirit. We have seen Jezebel spirits in people come to the rock many times. Unfortunately, the spirit has to use a vessel. When people haven't been delivered, haven't been healed, haven't been, haven't been in the word, you know, learning their authority, their identity in Christ, and they come into the church and they start trying to cause division. Oh, this pastor is not doing this. Oh, this deaconess doesn't do this. Oh, they're jealous of me. Oh, they don't, they don't, they don't, they don't, they don't, they envy me. You, you hear when, when a Jezebel spirit starts to operate, it's usually the new people. Oh, they're jealous. They envy. They don't understand. Jezebel spirit likes to seduce, manipulate, and control. Again, we're exposing that witch today. We're exposing that whore. Yes, Jezebel is a whore. She is. Her harlotry, that witchcraft, she caused people to literally, she caused prostitution, Baal worship, which was literally orgies, homosexual stuff in the, in the temple of Baal. She caused people to fall into that stuff, especially people from Israel, the Israelites, and even the body of Christ nowadays. You see it in the Old Testament. She convinced King Ahab, a king of Israel, to literally bow down to a false god. She caused literally people, false prophets, people that that literally would prophesy for Baal, that would do, that would do works and rituals and, and 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 do all types of witchcraft for Baal. She she literally led people into Baal worship, prostitution. I want you guys to put in the chat. Yes, you can because it's true. Jezebel is a whore. That's not a curse word. It's the truth. She is a whore. She is. We're gonna expose that witch today. So let's expose. Let, let's first read First Kings sixteen. All right. 
First Kings chapter First Kings chapter 16 verses 29 through 30, 33. In the 38th year of Asa king of Judah, Ahab the son of Omri became king over Israel, and Ahab the son of Omri reigned over Israel and Samaria 22 years. All right? Now Ahab the son of Omri did evil in the sight of the Lord more than all who were before him. I'm going to say it again. Ahab did evil in the sight of the Lord before all who had been there before him. He was a wicked king. And it came to pass as though it had been a trivial thing for him to walk in the sins of Jerobo Jer Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, that he took, he took as wife the daughter of Ithbal, king of the Sidions, and he went and served Baal and worshipped them. Think about that, guys. Ahab literally went and worshipped Baal. She took on a foreign wife from a foreign king, from a pagan nation who did not worship Yahweh, who worshipped false gods. Then he set up an altar for Baal in the temple of Baal, which he had built in Samaria. And Ahab made a woman a wooden image. Ahab did did more to provoke the Lord of Lord God of Israel to anger than all the kings of Israel who, who were before him. I'm going to say it again. And Ahab made an, a wooden image. Ahab did more to provoke the Lord God of Israel to anger than all the kings of, a of Israel who were before him. Can y'all believe that? He provoked the Lord God of Israel, Yahweh, in anger. Pretty much he pissed God off more than any king that was before him. God was pissed because this king of Israel who was supposed to lead the people the right way to Yahweh literally was leading people astray to bow worship. Do y'all know what they that, what bow worship was? When people cut themselves before this pagan God, when they would go and have homosexual activities and orgies and, 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 and sacrifice their firstborn child onto this God. It was demonic. It was paganistic. It was, it was witchcraft. So the king of Israel went from worshiping Yahweh to worshiping false gods and made wooden images. God hates when people bow down to wooden images. That's why in the Catholic churches, when you see people bowing down to these wooden statues or these cement statues of the saints, God hates it. A lot. He detests it. God does not want us bowing down to any statue, any wooden image, any plastic image. That's idol worship and God hates it. He detests it. It angers him. We're supposed to bow down to Yahweh, God is spirit, and you cannot box God up into any wooden image, into any building. Look, you can't box him up into your own church alone. No, God is spirit, and those who, wor who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. God is everywhere at once, omnipresent. And when you make a wooden image and try to try to try to box God up into that one wooden image, or if you you worship another God because you think that you can't go straight to God, he hates it. And you hear about this in Voodoo and Santeria. They tell you, oh, we worship God, but we don't go straight to him. We go through these other gods before we go to him because we have humility or because we want to be humble. No, God hates that. These people are convinced of doctrines of demons. They're bowing down to, 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 these, to these, these, these saints from the Bible, like Paul, like Peter. But what they're, what's happening is they're, they're perverting it and they're, they're bowing down to the statue, but really worshiping a false god. You see it all throughout voodoo and everything. Look, I'm going to tell you something. In Haitian voodoo and Santeria, they worship, they worship the, the, the key holder, which is, and they, and they put Peter, right? They'll bow down to Peter and say, he holds the keys and they'll bow down to Peter, but they'll put their false God behind Peter. If anybody ever tells you that you have to go through anybody other than Jesus Christ to get to the father, that is a Jezebel spirit operating. I'm going to say it again. If anyone ever tells you that you need to go through a saint to get to God, I'm going to say it one more time. I pray that somebody clips this up and makes it real. If anybody ever tells you that you need to go to a, through a saint, through a, a, another spirit, through whatever it is to get to God, that is a false prophet, that's false teaching, and they're leading you straight to hell. You don't have to go through Peter to get to, to get to Yahweh. Peter is a saint just like you are when you're filled with the Holy Spirit. They're in the cloud of witnesses. We don't have to pray to them. 
That is a Jezebel spirit operating and they and Jezebel loves to, to, to finesse and finagle and deceive people into witchcraft. Because you got false teachers out there teaching people this stuff and they're being led astray into sexual perversion, witchcraft. All of a sudden you wonder why you're part of this church. You were good before and now you're, you're, you're starting to be sexually perverse. Things are starting to shift now. Be careful what teachers you're watching online. Be careful what church you're being covered by. You need to make sure that what they're saying is Bible. Because Jezebel hates the word of God. When people start preaching against the Bible, I'm going to say it again. When people start preaching against the Bible, oh, you don't got to read the Bible. Oh, no, 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 bro, you better be careful. The word of God is beautiful, unmatched. There's the written word. There's the Ramus word. There's the, there's, there's the, the, the spoken word. Hey, when someone starts telling you, you got to go through Catholic saints, the, the, or the saints from the Bible and period. Like the Catholic Church or other preachers that will preach to you. Oh, you need to have an, an encounter with a saint in order to get to Jesus Christ. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. That's a lie from the pit of hell. The saints in heaven right now, I'm going to say this. The saints in heaven right now that are in the cloud of witnesses watching us, they want me to tell you this. Because I know they, I know they come in agreement with it too. Don't worship them. They don't want you to worship them. They don't want you to worship them. Don't worship, don't worship nobody in the cloud of witnesses. I'm pretty sure right now they're looking down with a smile on their face like, yes, finally, someone's preaching it. I know I know that they want me to tell you all this. Don't worship your dead grandma. Don't worship your dead, your dead grandpa. Don't worship any person that's passed away. Don't worship a dead saint. I don't care if in the Bible they were they were mighty and like Mary. Mary was pure. She was holy. She was she. she I mean, literally, Jesus Christ was born through her. Praise God. Great. That's amazing. I honor Mary, but I'm going to tell you something. Mary don't want you to worship her. Mary don't want you to worship her. Don't worship her. And yes, they're alive in heaven, but they're dead. They died. Everybody has to die. Their body is dead. In spirit, they're alive and they don't want you to worship them. They don't. They don't. And I'm telling you, demons will come. They'll shape shift into the image of, of a saint, of a dead relative. And they'll come to you and try to finesse you to get you to worship them. And think that you got to communicate to them to get to God. The minute you hear people teaching on stuff like that, that is idolatry. The minute you think in your mind that you got to go through a man or a woman of God to get to God. How about that? Whenever, whenever a man or woman points you to them, like you must go through me to get to God. You don't know God. I know God better than you and you must go through me. That is a Jezebel spirit. Man or woman, I don't care. That is a Jezebel spirit. That's idolatry. Men and women of God that are leaders in the body of Christ should be pointing you to Jesus Christ. A relationship with God should be allowing you to go through your process, even if you're right or if you're wrong, so you can learn through Jesus. They're only supposed to be 1 Peter chapter 5 examples. The Bible says that a leader is supposed to be a pastor, is supposed to be an example, and not, and not, not control or lord over God's people, his inheritance. I'm telling you, there's people right now on the internet that hundreds of thousands of people are following that believe in this stuff, that they believe that you should that you should go through saints to get to God. They, they believe that Peter holds the keys to get to heaven. They believe that you should worship them. I've heard, I've heard perversion of the word of God in this last hour since I've been saved. I've heard so much perversion to the point where like it, 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 it angers me. It gets me like this righteous anger. And y'all got to know your word. God is allowing it because the Bible says there will be many false prophets who rise up in the last hour, right? That will deceive many, if so, even po like possible, the very elect. Many doctrines of devils, seducing spirits. This is something that God said was going to happen. It's irrelevant. I mean, it's 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 relevant because it's in the Word of God, but it's 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 irrelevant if we're aware of it and we don't want it, and we don't want it to happen. It's going to happen. So even if you're saying, "Ah, oh, God, I pray against it. I pray against it." No. It's going to happen. It's been prophesied. You can't stop it. 
So regardless if you want it to happen or not, it's irrelevant. God's word is, is unmatched. And if it's if it's in the word of God, just like the, the, the world is going to end a certain way, just like Jesus, Jesus is going to come back as the lion of Judah with fire in his eyes, just like, 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 like this and that. False prophets and false teachers are going to arise and deceive many. My brothers and my sisters, stay away from idol worship because that usually is a Jezebel spirit. Let's continue. Manipulation and control. I want everyone to put in the chat, manipulation and control. Stay with me. The Jezebel sp spirit operates through manipulation and control and seeks to dominate and influence others using various tactic tactics to achieve its ends. The Jezebel, then Jezebel, his wife, this is the Bible, 1 Kings 21, 7. Then Je Jezebel, his wife said to him, you now exercise authority over Israel. Arise, eat food, and let your heart be cheerful. I will give you the vineyard of Naboth the Jezreelite. The, see, Jezebel, Jezebel literally manipulated her husband. Her husband tried to buy a vineyard from Naboth the Jezreelite, and Naboth the Jezreelite said no because that was his, that was his inheritance. He didn't want to sell it to the king, and the king he didn't even eat for like days. He went into a baby fit. He went into a, why won't he sell it? Even though he had all the money to buy any other vineyard he wanted. He wanted that one. So Jezebel went and finessed, like took paper, like wrote down a note to the king, to, to the to the governors of Israel, to the other leaders in Israel, saying that Naboth the Israelite betrayed the king and betrayed Israel, lying, using Ahab's name, saying like basically forging it, saying that he wrote it to get this man killed and take his vineyard. That same vineyard that she manipulated and lied to take from this innocent man is the same vineyard where she got casted off of the, off of the roof and thrown down, uh, off the balcony and thrown down to the dogs. So since the beginning, Jezebel was a manipulator. She literally convinced her husband, don't worry, you can eat. Let your heart be cheerful. I'm going to I'm going to get you the vineyard. And she and she and she acted as as if King Ahab was writing a letter to the leaders of Israel to get him killed, to get Naboth, the, 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 the Jezreelite uh, killed. It was an innocent man. This is the word of God. So whenever you see someone who operates in manipulation and control, likes to lie, likes to divide. Right. I'm going to give you all an example. We've seen situations in churches where people will come to the church. And they're operating in that spirit and they begin to to go behind the scenes, go one on one, one on one to this person, to that person, planting demonic seeds. And Jezebel is very manipulative and knows what that person is dealing with to try to get them to, 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 to fold and to flip. She likes to flip the weak. Jezebel goes after the weak people who either, you know, dealt with that spirit before so it's familiar or are, are, still, are still growing in the faith. Jezebel likes to finesse a lot of the babies in the faith. A lot of the babies. A lot of babies in the faith get finessed by Jezebel. I'm telling you, whenever you see someone coming to you, if it's division, if it's discord, if it's slander, especially against leadership. Whenever someone comes to you and starts talking about leadership in your church, dishonoring, just dividing and slandering. You better shut that Jezebel spirit up because I'm telling you for all those who want to operate in deliverance, put a fire emoji if you want to be casting out demons. Put a fire emoji in the chat if you want to cast out demons. I'm going to tell you something. The minute that Jezebel spirit can get you to come in agreement with her, put a fire emoji if you want to cast out demons. Even if you watch this rerun, rerun later. I'm telling you right now, the minute Jezebel comes, so let's say, for example, I'm in the church, I'm a new believer, or I'm growing in the faith, and a Jezebel spirit, a woman comes and says, hey, hey, Rich, man, don't you see how the pastor is being so, so like, I don't know, religious, like, they want us to dress a certain way, they, they don't want us to, they, like, we can't wear these short dresses, and that's so religious, right? The minute that guy, let's say I said, oh yeah, that's true. That is kind of religious. I just got Ahabbed out by that Jezebel in the spirit. And I'm telling you, you get Ahabbed out by that Jezebel, you ain't going to be able to cast out Jezebels. I've seen a lot of deliverance ministers online. I've seen just deliverance videos where I see the man or the woman of God praying and the demon will manifest. Now listen to this. This is good for y'all. Will manifest, but the, but the person doesn't get delivered. Just because you pray for a person, I'm going to say this right now. Just because you pray for this person and they fall out doesn't mean they got delivered. I'm going to say it again. Just because I lay hands and, 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 and you know what really bothers me a lot? And I want y'all to let me know if this bothers you. When, when ministers are pushing people down, 
I don't like that. If you ever come to, to, to our church, I don't push people down. I tell the pastors, don't, don't push people. You put your hand on their head. If you want to put it on their head, you put your hand on their, on their for, for men, men to men, women to women on their chest, whatever stomach, but you don't push nobody down. I can't stand that. That's, that's manipulation. That's like, that's off. So if, whenever you have someone that tries to push you down, so it looks like it's something powerful. Don't fall. Don't do that. Don't fall. Don't feel bad for them. Don't fall on purpose. It doesn't mean that the Holy Spirit isn't powerful. The Holy Spirit is not always trying to push someone down. It doesn't happen every time. I personally don't, and I can feel it sometimes when people are so used to that culture that they fall on purpose. I don't even like that. I just stop praying. For, I'm like, okay, I'm not going to, like, I, it, it bothers me. I've seen when the Holy Ghost power literally, literally, like, literally zaps somebody to where they fall out. I've seen that. It's happened to me. I've seen it. And you know when it's real. It is very real. But the Holy Ghost ain't always trying to do that. Just because someone falls out doesn't make it more holy. Everyone put in the chat, don't fall. <laughs> don't fall. Again, you come to our church, I'm telling you, if I lay hands on you, I'm going to make sure I keep it right there. You ain't going to see me try to fall to make it more holy. And just because you fall does not mean you got delivered. You'll see sometimes when I pray for someone and they fall out, I'll keep on praying because they didn't get delivered. You, you know when someone gets delivered, you see the man, the coughing up, the throwing up. Y'all have seen it on our lives. They're throwing up. They're, they're coughing up. They're crying. They, there's, an, there's, an, there's an expelling, like something's expelled from them. You can tell. You can feel it. It's discernment. And if I'm praying for someone and I know that they, they need like a process of deliverance, they need someone to pray for them for the next 15 minutes, I'll get someone else, a deacon or a pastor, hey, come, come pray for them so I can continue praying. Y'all see that on my life. How many of y'all have seen the lives where we do that? We do that at the altar every service. They gonna get the deliverance that they came for. It might not be everything because they still have to grow a little bit and break some legal rights and altars, whatever it is, they gotta, they gotta seek God. But whatever they came for, they gonna get delivered. I'm telling you, pushing is not of God. That is not what God wants you to do. He does not want you to push him. Hallelujah. Don't fall. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Jezebel spirited individuals spread false doctrines and distort the truth. I talked about this earlier. They lead others astray, leading them into spiritual bondage. Revelation chapter two, verse 20. Nevertheless, I have a few things against you because you allow that woman Jezebel who calls herself a prophetess. I'm going to say it again. You allow that woman Jezebel who calls herself a prophetess to teach and seduce my, my servants to commit sexual immorality and to eat things sacrificed on the idols. Whenever you see somebody come into church, man or woman, it could be, it could be either or, and they're causing people to fall into sexual immorality, it is more than likely a Jezebel spirit. I'm going to say it again. Whenever someone comes to the church, listen, whenever someone comes to the church and they cause people to start committing sexual immorality they're over there sleeping with this person and then you, you, you rebuke them and you correct them and then they sleep with this person and they just can't seem to stop that is a jezebel spirit how many y'all in this church how many y'all in this chat right now have ever seen that type of person and how many y'all in this chat right now have been that type of person because if you've been that type of person you more than likely need deliverance and you'll hear this too oh i had a dream that they're supposed to be my husband and my wife let me tell you something. My little brother, Deacon Kevin, who, the, who leads the productions, right? I've, I've known him since he was 15, born again. I'm going to tell you this. We've had grown women, grown in their 30s, late 20s, grown women. He's only 19 years old. And this is before he was even 19. And he could, come, he could attest to this. Come to him and say, the Lord told me in a dream I'm supposed to marry you. That is a Jezebel spirit. That is a Jezebel spirit. They'll claim to have this pro prophetic thing. And if you don't got discernment or you're newer in the faith, you can get got quick. Stick to the word of God. If it feels weird, if you don't feel comfortable, if it's confusing, if it's off, don't trust it. God is a God of peace. 
God is going to, he wants you to feel comfort. The Holy Spirit comforts you. Don't receive that word. Don't come in agreement with that yoke of bondage. That's witchcraft. If someone comes to you, I'm going to tell you this right now. If someone comes to you and tells you, God told me I'm supposed to marry you. I had a dream or whatever, but God hasn't told you, don't trust it. I'm going to say it again. Because some of you need this word. If someone comes to you and says, oh, God told me, or this, how about this? I've, I've, been in, look, I've been in services. One time I was in a service, right? This is in Houston, Texas, right? And I was praying. I was going through the crowd. I was, I was moving in, 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 in the grace of, 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 of prophecy, the spirit of prophecy. I was prophesying and I, and I saw a couple. And I, I mean, the Holy Spirit highlighted them and said, Jezebel Ahab, the man was Ahab out. She was a whole Jezebel. I could, I, Je she had a spirit of Jezebel in her. I could feel it. I discerned it. I knew it. And I went straight to the man. I said, does, does she control you, bro? Does she manipulative, bro? And he was like, yeah, I ain't going to lie. And, and I said, I said, and she's like, he's, he's like, yeah, we're supposed to get married, but I'm not sure. God, has, God hasn't confirmed it to me, but he confirmed it to her. I said, okay, I called that, those spirits out straight up. And she, 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 this is what she said, a prophet, and I'm not going to say his name, but a prophet on the internet, a prophet told me that I'm supposed to marry him. He's my husband. I said, and what has God told you? What has God told him? How do you have this prophetic revelation that you're supposed to get married to this man? And this man's in, in complete bondage and he's, and he's freaking scared, like literally like in fear trying to be obedient to God because he doesn't want to mess up and thinks he's supposed to marry you, bro. <laughs> Look, she, and it's crazy because we can see on Cash App, she had sold into the ministry, right? And then when we left, she asked for a refund <laughs> because she didn't get the word she wanted. Is that crazy or what? But that man, in that when I, when I gave him that word, I saw his eyes open up. He was freed. He was like, in his, in his spirit, he was like, yes. Because he was scared. He thought, man, I don't want to be obedient, uh, disobedient to God. He's newer in the faith. And he was like, man, I, I guess I'm supposed to marry her. Yeah, right. No, I don't care. God needs to confirm it. God is a confirming God. God is a confirming God. Oh, yeah, we ain't tripping about money. Trust me, God's going to provide regardless. I, we gave her the refund back quickly. Yes, cash app. Yes, refund. No problem. Anyone ask for a refund, we always give it back. We don't ever, trust me, we're not tripping. It's God's money. The Jezebel spirit is real and false prophets will, man, let me say something right now. Just because somebody can see in the spirit does not make them a true prophet of God. Do you know how many witches and warlocks are out there right now that can see in the spirit? They can tell you your whole past. I've experienced false prophets myself where they'll tell me a whole bunch of stuff about the past. And I'm talking about in Christ. They'll tell me stuff about the past, but then when it comes to the future, they can't get it. They don't get it. It's off. It doesn't come to pass. And just because someone misses the mark doesn't make them a false prophet. The Bible says that they prophesied presumptuously, but I know when someone's operating in a spirit of divination, when you see the idolatry, when you see the witchcraft, when you see, when you see everyone being pointed to them. Have y'all ever seen that? When like, it's like they're all, it's like, it's like they want the, they want everyone come to me. I'm the guy, I'm the girl, I'm the person bow down to me. And man, in some churches, you literally see that. Let me tell you something. I don't bow down. I've never done that. Actually, one time to my father, my biological father, because I just want, I wanted to honor him one time and I bowed down and he started laughing. He said, get up. I was, I was playing around this. It was, it was, I was, I was, I was being real. Like I was like, dad, I love you. I bowed down. He was like, get up, stop doing that. But that's the only time I bowed down to somebody, my biological father. And I love him so much. In the Bible, you see in the old Testament, they would bow down in honor. I get it. Yes. In the New Testament, can you bow down? You can. I get it. There's, a, there's honor, especially in certain, certain cultures. I don't think bowing down is demonic. But when they're bowing down, and you can feel it, you know it, you can discern it. When they're bowing down in idolatry, you can feel it. You know. You know when it's honor and you know when it's idolatry. And when they're pointing everybody to them, I'm telling you right now, more than likely it's a Jezebel spirit because she wants to be a prophetess. And she can operate in men and women. She wants to be a prophetess. She wants to be liked. She wants everyone to, to come to her. The minute you go against her, she'll get angry. She'll get real angry and retaliate and be revengeful and come at you with everything she got. How do we know that? Elijah. 
What happened to the prophet Elijah? He went and slayed all the false prophets. He called upon fire down from heaven, burned up the altars and slayed those prophets, chopped their heads off. And she got pissed off and she sent a word, a, 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 a demonic word, right? There's life and death in the power of the tongue to Elijah and he ran. I mean, this man ran and was suicidal, got depressed, isolated himself. I'm telling you. So she'll come at you. That spirit will come at you with everything she got. I've had attacks from Jezebel in the spirit. I've experienced that myself. Especially after you cast out a bunch of them. Man, man, after services, I got to pray. I got to go home and pray. I can't just cast out a whole bunch of demons and, and win souls and then go home and like, okay, no, I got to get in the spirit. I got to pray because the, the spiritual warfare is, is, is real. I trust in God. But if God tells me to pray, if God says the kingdom of, of heaven suffers violence, but the violence take it back by force, I'm going to suffer that, that violence like John the Baptist. Look what happened to John the Baptist. I'm going to give you a revelation. Who did John the Baptist get his head chopped off by? Let's see who knows. Who did John the Baptist get his head chopped off by? What spirit? What spirit did John the Baptist get his head chopped off by? No, what spirit? It was the Jezebel spirit. No, it wasn't King Herod. King Herod. It, it, I mean, he ordered it, but but it was the 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 daughter of his wife. That ordered the the head of um of Elijah. But what spirit was operating in that daughter, and in that and in that mother? It was a Jezebel spirit. It was the same word that was given to Elijah about his about him being being killed. That 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 word stayed stayed in the realm of the spirit and followed John, because John operated in what the spirit of Elijah. Jezebel hated John because what did John do? What did John preach? So I'm, I'm going to teach y'all something real quick. What did John preach and what does Jezebel hate? One word. It starts with an R. What did John preach? It starts with an R. What did John preach? Repentance. He taught repent. He preached repentance. And what does Jezebel not want to do? Repent. So whenever you see someone operating in rebellion, where you're telling them, especially, you know, as a pastor, as a leader in the church, as, as, as an apostolic voice in my church, when I'm ministering and I'm pastoring, you know, people and they can't repent. Let's say, for example, sexual morality. They're always falling to pornography, always falling to pornography. What spirit do you think is operating in the mist? You tell them to repent. They don't repent. Somehow, some way they just they just always got this excuse. Smile on their face. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I watch porn. I, I know I got to stop. Bruh, if you watch porn and you got a smile on your face and everything's cool and you don't feel godly sorrow or remorse, you need to get deliverance. You should not watch pornography, fornicate or fall into sexual immorality and have a smile on your face. You should have the fear of the Lord and godly sorrow. You should be saying, God, I'm so sorry. You should be crying. You should be saying, I need freedom. I don't want this anymore. But if it's just casual to you and it's a weekly thing or bi-weekly or once a month and everything's cool, you're more than likely dealing with a Jezebel spirit. And there's people on this live right now that are watching live and that are going to watch later and you feel something as I'm saying this. In your body, you literally right now feel something moving. If that's you, put a fire emoji. There's some, there's people right now, you're feeling something you might, you might actually, can I keep it 100? You might actually not like me right now. You're hearing me preach and something makes you mad. More than likely, it's a Jezebel spirit. I'm telling you, look at all those fire emojis. Look at all those fire emojis. Put a one in the chat. If right now you're feeling like you know that, that you don't want to feel this, but you're feeling like you don't like me. Put a one in the chat. You liked me before. You were cool with me. You're watching the, the, the YouTube live. My phone dropped. You were watching the YouTube live. Everything was cool, but now you just see. Look at that. Look at that. We got look at all those ones. One, two, three, four, five. Look at that. You need deliverance from Jezebel. That spirit don't like me. 
You need to repent. Look at all those ones. 8, 9, 10, 11. I'm telling you, that's a spirit. Someone put two. I'm telling you right now, this is a spirit. You need deliverance. Let's continue. Stay, you better, watch this live all the way to the end. You need to get you need to get you need to get everything out. You need all the revelation you need. Knowledge delivers. The Bible talks about that. So again, she'll commit, she'll cause people to commit sexual immorality. She's very seductive. She'll she'll come to the church, right? Like the spirit will be in a man or woman and, and start wearing certain clothes that's very seducing. It could be men or women. Very seductive. Very like, oh, look at me, showing off body parts. And and and, and how many of y'all have experienced that in a church? You can feel it. Very seductive. Jezebel is a system. She comes in with a function in a vessel. And the spirit of seduction is part of that operation. I must say this too. If anyone ever tells you that the Jezebel spirit is not real. I've heard teachings like this. If anyone tells you that the Jezebel spirit is not real, what do you think that means? I want to see what y'all think. I'll, I'll read, I'll read what, the, what the chat says. If someone tells you the Jezebel spirit ain't real, and there's no Jezebel spirit, what do you think that means? I want to see what y'all heads at. They're tolerating it. Jezebel's operating. They got it. They are a Jezebel. They're blind. Exactly. False preacher. Yes. Uh, fa that's false teaching. They're blind. Tolerating that spirit. They need deliverance. Deception. Exactly. I've casted out too many. Too many Jezebel spirits for someone to tr come, come and try to convince me that the Jezebel spirit ain't real. You tripping. I've seen that. I've seen that spirit with my own eyes. The book of Revelation talks about that spirit not tolerating her. This is the New Testament. This is the book of Revelation. How are you going to tell me in this new dispensation, even though the New Testament says it, that there's no spirit of Jezebel? Tripping. Repent. Turn away from that false teaching. Turn away from believing that false teaching. If some of y'all in this chat right now but have believed that false doctrine, you need to repent. Don't let that witch yoke you up. She's a real spirit. Are altar, are altars of Baal real? Yes, of course. If you see a Jezebel, there's probably a Baal altar somewhere of witchcraft. I've, I've casted out probably at least over, I say two to three hundred Jezebel spirits, probably even more. It's the same cry that comes out when they scream. It's the same laugh. When you start praying for them, the person will be like real, like crying, like oh, shaking. And all of a sudden they just, yeah, they start laughing like a wicked laugh. It's like a witch. They start laughing. And then you got to commit, you got to bind that spirit. You got to get to the root of it. It's usually something to do with rape, molestation, witchcraft. Once you get to the root and they have no tie, no legal right to that vessel and you cast that spirit out, you'll start hearing, you'll hear that scream. I'm telling you, it's an, it's a, it's a very, inf it's a, it's a, it's an infamous scream. You know what, you, you know that scream when you hear it. Y'all, y'all have heard it on the YouTube lives or in person if you ever came. When that spirit comes out, it's a loud scream. It's loud. I've heard it sometimes where it sounds like there's multiple people, women screaming at the same time. I've even, I've even heard it in men. I've heard men sound like women when they scream and they don't even have that type of voice. I'm telling you, demons are real, y'all. Demons are real. Angels are real. Heaven is real. The hell is real. It's not a joke. And on, on this channel, on my, my ministry that the Lord has ordained me to do, I'm going to expose darkness. And people need to repent. John the Baptist style. People need to repent. We're in the last hour. He's coming back. Maranatha. Let's continue. Those that are under the influence of the Jezebel spirit become envious and jealous of others. Especially those, again, who possess spiritual authority or influence. They engage in gossip, slander, or character assassination to undermine their perceived rivals. 
First Kings 19, one through two. Then Jezebel sent a messenger to Elijah saying, so let the gods do to me and more also, if I do not make your life as the life of one of them by, to by, uh, by tomorrow about this time. Like I said earlier, this was Jezebel sending a message to Elijah saying the same way you chopped off the heads of those false prophets. She said, let, let, let the gods do the same thing to me if I don't do the same thing to you by tomorrow. So she sent a message of witchcraft. So whenever you, whenever you, when you see people gossiping, slandering, character assassination, I've had Jezebel spirits come to the church since we were in the house, man. And they'll come and they'll say, oh, this ministry is going to fall. This ministry is going to fall. It's not going to make it out of the house. It's not going to go anywhere. You shouldn't be part of this ministry, man. There's been times where we get attacked. And, and I'm telling you this. I want everyone to put in the chat. Birds of a feather flock together. Put that in the chat. Birds of a feather flock together. Put that in the chat. Because I'm telling you, man, I've seen it. I've seen people. They come to the church and then all of a sudden, another person who's overcoming that spirit and another person who's overcoming that spirit, they all group together. And it's and, and what those spirits do is they strengthen each other. They come together and they strengthen each other. All of a sudden, they're clicked up. You can, you know, you, I can see it every time. If someone's dealing with the Jezebel spirit, if someone's dealing with the spirit of rejection, if someone's dealing with the spirit of Leviathan, you'll see it. They, they don't even know each other. They just all of a sudden start to, they just, they just, they just like each other and they click up. It's those demons. They, cause the Bible even says it. A kingdom divided against itself cannot stand. So even the demons know that there's power in unity. So whenever you see that in the church, that the Jezebels are coming together, you'll see it. You'll see it. That's why, body of Christ, I don't team up with just any ministry. It's rare. I've had a lot of people ask me to go to their, their, their church, ask me to do revivals, different things to team up. It's I, The Lord has already told me to stay in my lane and be careful who I partner with. I don't know what's going on behind the scenes. If you see me partnering with somebody, I know them. Like in Dallas, when I went, we're going to Dallas in April, April 20th, I know them. I, I, they're my family. I have a close relationship. I know them. But that's why I don't, I don't team up with so many ministers because you don't know what's going on behind the scenes. You know how many times I've, I've heard these stories about ministers committing homosexual acts? Bro, I'm talking about well-known preachers get caught up behind the scenes in homosexual relationships while they're married, bro. That's a Jezebel spirit. And it's always the little foxes. The wandering, it begins with the wandering eyes. Then it transitions to pornography. Look, that's what, when people, when, when people have that mentality, oh, it's okay to watch porn every now and then. Some of you have repented for pornography, right? You've said it out loud. You've told God, but in your heart, you didn't. Because in your heart, you still believe, okay, I'm just going to take a fast from porn and I'll come back later. That's what you're saying in your heart. When you repent from pornography, you hate it, you feel godly sorrow, you have remorse, and you're done. Your heart is saying, I am done. But whenever people continue to do these things, I'm telling you, this is what it leads to. Okay, you got the, the one pastor who, who watches porn one time, four or five months down the road, they watch it again. I'm sorry, I've, I've seen it. I've seen it. I, they watch porn, they watch porn, everything. Oh, but I, I, I repented. It was like five, six months ago. It's all right, though. No, it's not. No, it's not. Because those small foxes will allow in a whole operation. Next thing you know, that minister, that man of God, that woman of God is committing adultery. You think adultery just happens? I'm in Orlando, Florida. You know what they call Orlando? The preacher killer. They call Orlando the preacher killer. You know why Orlando's called the preacher killer? Because you know the main, the main principality operating over this region is Jezebel. Literally gay pride. The, 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 the slogan of Orlando is Orlando pride. After they had the, the Pulse nightclub shooting, like, like I think it was like 10, 10, 12 years ago. 10, 12 years ago, for those that don't know, what happened was a, a Muslim guy went in with like a rifle into a gay nightclub and, and killed a lot of people, unfortunately. A lot of people died. Regardless if they were gay or, or not, it doesn't matter. But a lot of people got shot up, right? And after that, they because they had, the, obviously the Jezebel spirit used that to, to, to transition Orlando, the, the, the region, 
over to her or now now when you look at orlando you see orlando pride and you'll see the 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 lgb the the, the rainbow flag which is for the lgbtq community and we're having a revival at the Disney Amphitheater in July that literally has the rainbow flag on it that was dedicated to the LGBTQ community. We're going to be casting out demons in that same amphitheater. Heart of downtown Orlando, Lake Eola. Be prepared. We're going to release that soon. And by the way, this Saturday, again, I said it earlier, we are having a mass deliverance. If you need deliverance and you know it, you need to come this Saturday to Orlando, to Central Florida. We're in Apopka. We're like... 20 minutes from downtown Orlando. We're right up the road. It's it's pretty much Orlando. Come to the come to the church. Come get your deliverance. If you can't come in person, join us online. You, you, you'll be able to get delivered online, but I'm telling you something. It's something different about when you're in person and you get hands laid on you. It's something about it. I'm telling you, yes, the Holy Spirit is on all powerful, all knowing everywhere at once. But when you come into this atmosphere here at the rock, if you know, you know. If you've ever been to The Rock in person and you already know it gets lit and the presence of God is powerful, I want you to put a fire emoji in the chat because it's not a joke. It's real. Let's continue. The Jezebel, look at this. The Jezebel spirit thrives on sowing discord and division in the church. Like I said, it seeks to create strife, undermine unity, and turn people against one another. Just recently, we had that. We, we just had that attack. Well, wow, it's a lot of fire emojis. Praise God. Just recently, we had that attack in the church, where a woman came in that I was operating in that spirit. God bless her, and and she continued to cause division. I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you guys an example. I'm not gonna say her name, but I'm gonna give you an example. Listen to this. So she came to the church causing division. She tried to go against leadership. We warned her. The Bible talks about someone who causes division in the book of Titus. Warn them once. And if they continue to do it, have nothing to do with them. We went to her more than once in private. We brought leadership. We brought we kept counseling her, but the woman would not stop causing division. She started messaging people behind closed doors or, or, or behind behind. But nobody but nobody nobody knew about it saying, oh, they're they're jealous of me. Oh, they don't understand. Oh, you're an amazing person. Be careful. All these things causing division. God exposed that thing real quick. And unfortunately, that person had to be kicked out of the ministry, had to be kicked out. That spirit, God bless that woman. I, I hope that she gets freed and we have a plan of reconciliation to bring her back to get healing and deliverance if she, if, if she comes back with a repented heart for real and we're going to make sure she really does. But the Bible says someone who causes division, warn them once and if they don't stop, have nothing to do with them. That stuff is supposed to be church for real. And because pastors aren't following the word of God, Jezebel's all up in so many different ministries. Matthew 18, 15 through 17 talks about going to your brother in private when he sins against you, bringing one or two and then bringing them before the church. And if they still don't repent after you went in private, brought two people and went before the church to kick them out. We've had to do that at this ministry when people don't want to repent of fornication. We've had all types of situations, people that are married, trying to date. Oh, but I'm going through a divorce, though. It doesn't matter. You're not divorced trying to court people and date while they're still married and they don't see it. Jezebel spirit. They got to go. They don't want to repent. You can't stay here. The Bible talks about one little le leaven can spoil the whole lump. What that means is one rotten apple can spoil the whole bunch. If you don't if you don't take authority over that spirit, she will take authority over your church. So for the young minister or even the seasoned ones, pastor, pastor prophet, apostle, evangelist, teacher, if you're dealing with that spirit, you need to take authority. You need to put your foot down. You need to, you need to, you need to go read about Jehu. Jehu didn't play. God, Je, God anointed Jehu to go and, and, and slay that witch. Go read about what Jehu did. He went, he, 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 man, they came up, they came to him, the kings. Is there any peace? Do you have peace? They tried to make peace with Jehu. Who said no? Because you, you tolerate that witch, that harlotry. And he, boom, with a bone arrow, shot him straight in the back, killed him. He didn't play, bro. You cannot tolerate Jezebel in the church. Some of you are dealing with a, with a, a mother, a father, a sister, a brother, someone who's dealing with a Jezebel spirit. You should not tolerate it. You should love them. But sometimes you got to separate because love does not mean association. Because that Jezebel spirit is very manipulative, especially if you were raised by a Jezebel spirit. 
What do I mean by that? Your mother or your father dealt with it. I'm telling you right now, some of you, that spirit is familiar to you. If you've been, if you have, if you've been in, uh, or if you've had parents that committed adultery, were, were very lustful, they didn't, they didn't, they didn't treat each other right, very divisive, did it wasn't raised in a healthy, loving marriage. There was, there was 100% of Jezebel spirit. You know why I know? Because Jezebel is called literally means Jezebel. The word Jezebel literally means the unhusbander. Jezebel literally means the unhusbander. I want everyone to put in the chat unhusbander. So for the married couples, whenever you hear this, whenever you feel this or you hear this in your head, your husband or your, or your, or your how about this? Your husband doesn't love you. He, he wants somebody else. Be, be, you know, they, 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 they don't care about you. That's a Jezebel spirit ministering to you. Because what happens? You get angry. You start feeling some type of way. Now you you're, 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 you're have a cold shoulder. Now you sleep in the same bed, but you ain't even sleeping in the same bed because you're, divi you're divided. That's a Jezebel spirit operating. And that spirit is going to try to get you to commit adultery. And I'm going to say this for the men and women of God. If you are married and you've watched pornography, I'm going to say it again. If you're married and you've watched pornography, you have committed adultery on your spouse. I'm going to say it again. If you're married and you com and you watched pornography, you committed adultery. The word, the word for sexual immorality is the word pornea. It literally is a whole category of everything that falls under that umbrella. That's pornography, homosexuality, pedophiliality, bestiality, masturbation, um, um, fornication, any of that. That's the same umbrella for sexual immorality. So if you think in your mind, I'm not cheating on my wife, I'm not cheating on my husband, I'm just watching porn, you're allowing Jezebel into the mix. She's going to take control of your marriage and cause chaos and then try to go for your children. Some of you, I feel this prophetically, some of you are watching porn as a Christian and you're married and you wonder why your kid is dealing with homosexuality. You wonder why your daughter is dealing with sexual, uh, she's being very provocative and very lustful at a young age. 13, 14, dressing crazy, being all being a loosey goosey all up in all up in her high school and middle school. You wonder why it comes from you, mom or dad, because you're not repenting. You're not putting your foot down and saying, Jezebel, get out of my house. This is why parents need to pray. You think it's a joke? There's altars that are in bloodlines that are speaking against y'all. You need to stand up and build a godly altar of prayer. This whole thing, I pray once a week, I pray twice a week. You're tripping, especially if you have children or if you're married. Especially for the men of God. If you're saying you're a husband and you're a man of God and you're not praying for your family, you're, you can allow that demon in and that demon will have cause chaos. <laughs> that demon will cause, cause shipwreck. That demon will turn your whole family out. How many of y'all feel convicted right now? Put a one in the chat. Someone said, can I join online from Germany for deliverance? Yes. This Saturday, I'm going to be praying and you can, wherever you're at, you can receive it. I'm going to be praying a mass deliverance. Wherever you're at, you can receive it. The minute you have a child or you have a husband or wife, it's like the enemy's trying to destroy all of it. And Jezebel's the unhusbander. Whenever you see divorce, whenever you see divorce, more than likely, Jezebel is there. She's in the mix. Whenever you see someone saying, this, I, I hear this sometimes, I don't like them because of this or that, I'm going to get divorced. If you ever have a pastor, let me say this, if you ever have a pastor that condones divorce and says, it's okay to get divorced, more than likely, there's a Jezebel spirit operating. The Bible says that divorce, God, Jesus said that he, that he allows divorce because of the hardness of our hearts, only because of sexual morality, right? But still, God wants us to forgive. If you can forgive and you can make things right, stay with them. If they repent and you can forgive, stay with them. If they're, not, if they, if they're tripping out and you don't want to divorce them, you can separate. It's better to separate than to divorce.
But if you have a pastor that's recommending divorce, some of you will say, but what about if the husband's beating the wife? Okay, separate. I've recommended that to people. Call the cops. Call the cops on that guy. Get him locked up and separate. Let him go do a few years in prison and come out and hopefully he repented. Straight up. But the last thing, the last option should be divorce. Whenever you hear someone saying, oh yeah, I'm going to get divorced because the person did something to them wrong that they don't like or because they got hurt, it's usually a Jezebel spirit operating. I'm telling you, I hate divorce. God can make, God can always make things work. He can always make things work. I'm telling you. Our God is a God of restoration, of reconciliation. He's a God of love. Romans 8, 28, all things work for the good of those who love God that are called according to his purpose. I've seen many times where there's relationships where the man or the woman cheated and then the other person, it was hard, but I counseled them through it. They forgave and they came back together and they're stronger than ever. And now they got a testimony. Someone's saying, oh, what if you already got divorced? What's up, Lovato? God bless you, my brother. Go follow my brother. What if you already got divorced? Oh, well, but it's too late. It, you got to repent. Realize that you might have been wrong and repent and don't do it again. It doesn't mean you got to go back to the person and and try to and try to get married. No, you don't have to do that. But recognize that you were wrong and repent. Let's continue. Five days straight of exposing that witch is about to be good. Undermining pastoral authority. The Jezebel spirit seeks to undermine pastoral authority and leadership. It challenges, disrespects, and rebels against God's appointed leaders, creating chaos and confusion. Look at this, 1 Kings 21, 5 through 10. But Jezebel, his wife, came to him and said to him, why is your spirit so sullen that you eat no food? This is Jezebel speaking to Ahab. He said to her, because I spoke to Naboth, the Jezreelite. Remember I said it earlier, he wanted to buy his property and said to him, give me your vineyard for money or else if it pleases you, I will give you another vineyard for it. Look, when, when Naboth, the Jezreelite said no to Ahab about buying his vineyard, he had every right to say yes or no. He said no. Ahab got butt hurt. I don't know why he would, because he's king. He could have any vineyard in, in, in all in, in that entire country, but he wanted that one specifically. And what did Jezebel do? Jezebel went against authority. Jezebel went against 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 that God given authority. The reason Naboth didn't want to give it up is because it was literally his inheritance that would be passed down. So Jezebel tried to go in between all that and destroy it. She hates authority. Everyone, I want you to put in the chat. Jezebel is rebellious. Whenever you see a Jezebel spirit all up in the church, she ain't going to submit. I'm telling you. She'll come in and try to, she'll, this is what she'll do. I'll give you all an example. I've seen it. She'll come into the church. Listen, she'll come into the church again and she'll go straight for the leader. I've seen it. They come at me. They come straight into the church and they want me to pray for them. I've had women, literally women come to the altar and want me to lay hands on them for like seven, eight weeks consecutive. You know, you know what I do? Babe, where's my wife at? And my wife, my wife is a Jezebel, is a Jezebel slayer. She cast out Jezebels because she had one and overcame that witch. So she has an authority. If y'all ever see me online or on, on the internet or in person, what do I say? Babe, where's my wife at? And I'll look around and she's usually right there. She already sees it. And you'll see that woman, she'll get oh, get pissed off because she want me to lay hands on them. No, I ain't going to lay hands on you. No. You dealing with that spirit, I ain't laying hands on you. It ain't happening. I'm not going to put my hand all up in your stomach so you can feel good. No. It ain't happening. I'm not going to feel up on you. I don't want to. Ill, nasty. I got a wife. I'm straight. I don't need you. It's that spirit that wants to be touched and, and, and wants to uh, make a whole thing. Because that spirit, oh, I want, I want him to do it, the leader. Why do you think so many so many leaders get seduced, bro? If you're if you're a pastor, if you're a man of God, and you're doing one-on-one -on -one counseling with women, and you don't have no other witness with you, you are tripping. You are a target for Jezzy. Jezebel's gonna come at you and destroy you. You will never see me one-on-one -on -one counseling in my office, a woman by myself. Heck, nah, it ain't happening. 
Somebody going to be there. Another pastor, another woman, a guy, my wife, a group of leaders. Bro, we don't play when it comes to that stuff. That's how men end up in adultery. Oh, let me counsel. Let me let me counsel this woman of God alone. And then all of a sudden things start happening in the office. Duh. Duh. Don't play with that. Don't tolerate that, man. Look at look at look at look at Delilah said. I don't agree. If your husband is beating you, leave. No, I just said you separate and you pray for that man. That's probably a Jezebel spirit operating. You need to pray for that man and you need to and you and you pray for him to get freed. The Bible says if he leaves you, then you're then, then you're loose from the marriage. But you should never just leave someone because they're beating you. I will never recommend that. I'll say separate, call the cops on him. Don't put a restraining order on him, but pray. Pray and, and ask the Lord to deliver him. The Bible says we are only to divorce because of sexual immorality. There is never a time where I believe you should just get divorced. No. No, you need to you need to step away, even if it takes eight years of prayer and the man gets delivered. Amen. Amen. What if you don't initiate the divorce? That's not like I said, if the person wants to leave you in rebellion and they have no and, and, and they're not right and you can't control it. A, it is what it is. That falls on them. You if I was you, I would make sure you they know it. Hey. The word of God says this, I, I don't agree with you, but if you're forcing it on me, I can't do nothing about you. It is what it is. Veronica said, my husband would, couldn't stop cheating 16 years and wouldn't stop cheating. Well, the Bible says you are allowed to divorce because of sexual morality. You are, you're allowed to divorce. Like Hosea in the Bible, you should try to forgive him. But if the man, if the woman keeps cheating, pray about it. Make sure the Lord releases you from that marriage. Make sure the Lord have a relationship with God and make sure he tells you you are loose from that marriage because of sexual morality. Praise God. Pedro says, what if you forgive multiple times and they keep cheating? If that's your wife. Right, not not. Look, I'm gonna say this right now. I'm not giving no relationship to any girlfriend or boyfriend. If you're a girlfriend or boyfriend and they're cheating on you, you need it. Jesse's all up in your in your relationship because you're already in fornication. God ain't in it. I'm gonna say this right now. I feel that prophetically. If anybody on this chat is taking this advice and thinking in their mind, oh my girlfriend and my boyfriend, and looking at it like I'm talking to you. No, I ain't talking to you. I'm talking about people who have been married according to the governing laws of the land. You got a marriage certificate. It's been, it's been it's been signed. Not oh I got a girlfriend. No, please don't take this advice. If you're in a girlfriend and boyfriend relationship, you already got Jezebel in the mist. Repent. Repent. I'm saying people who are married, who are actually married, court document signed. Not oh I got married to them because I love them so much and we've been together for ten years and we had a bunch of sex and kids and everything. I don't care if you got five kids with a girl with a woman. I don't care if you've been faithful to her for 10 years in a, in a girlfriend boyfriend relationship if you have not been married on paper according to the governing laws of the land you ain't married you you've been in fornication for the last 10 years you need to go get married for real and break that curse off of you your, your wife and your children because that curse will follow I don't believe in girlfriend and, boy, and boyfriend worldly things you, if you see my teachings, I stand strong on courtship. I don't believe in that. Jezebel will not enter our church. You see the miracle signs and wonders. You see the deliverance, transformation of people. You see people come to the church. You see me evangelize in the field. They come to the church, get saved, and they rise up. And you guys see them on camera being leaders and powerful men and women of God in the church. This don't happen because of a, a social media following. It happens because of obedience, because we're obedient to our father. We're obedient to his word, his kingdom principles. It ain't because of me. It's because of obedience. I cling on to the Lord. I cling on to his word. I, I commune with the Holy Spirit. And because of that, God backs up this church. His hand is over this church. It's this ministry. It's God's hand that's over this ministry. It's his ministry, not mine. Let's continue. If y'all receiving this message and you're enjoying it, put a fire emoji. Come on, run up the fire emoji, and then I want to get these likes up, man. I'm trying to. I know it's. I know it's early. It's about. It's about twelve. Or well, we got nine hundred and eleven people on at twelve forty four in the afternoon. That's crazy. But we only got four hundred and fifty nine likes. Nah, we got nine hundred and eleven of y'all. 
let's get the likes to over a thousand. I'm about to, I'm not done with the message. And again, I'm exposing this spirit Monday through Friday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, all five days this week. And this Saturday is going to be a mass deliverance. Jesus, read it. Jesus over Jezebel. It's a, it's a picture of Jezebel getting thrown off the balcony and fed to the doggies. She got fed to the perros, the dogs. Eaten up and, and, and she got murked by dogs. The same vineyard where she stole that she stole from Naboth the Jezreelite. There goes the address right there. Pull up. 2230 East Semeron Boulevard, Apopka, 27203. I think that was uh, 32703. If you want to get this shirt, it's on our website. It's on our website. It's on our website. The ROCfamily.org. You can get it. Go buy it. We're going to be selling it in person too. Um, hey, for, for, for Saturday, I'm going to be giving a discount on these shirts too. We're going to sell out. Jesus, Je Jesus over Jezebel. Jezebel's a witch. Everyone put in the chat, Jezebel's a witch. We're going we're gonna, we're gonna to expose that witch. Someone said my favorite pet. Amen. <laughs> Amen. I have two dogs. I got two golden doodles. And they don't play. When they see a Jezzy, they're barking. Come on, like up the like up the live stream. I'm gonna tell you something. Jezebel can operate in men too. <coughs> Whenever you see a man come into a church and he starts sleeping with all the women and he don't want to repent. That's a Jezebel spirit. Whenever you see a man come into church and he wants to be, he wants to be the spotlight. He wants to be the one with the microphone. Nobody's as anointed as him. And I'm the one. And, and he's, he's very seductive and very flirtatious. That is a Jezebel spirit operating in a man. I have seen that in our church before. I've seen men come to the church and they want to be, they want to be lifted and, and exalted and they, and they want, they want to, they want to be the main people and, and they're very seductive and very like, 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 like all up in women's faces, licking their lips and trying like LL Cool J or something like that. That's a, that's a Jezebel spirit. You can feel it. If you know what I'm talking about, put a fire emoji. You can feel it. You know it. It feels weird. You're like, yo, what's going on? This is this is this is weird. Someone said P. Diddy, yeah. He got he is a a mature Jezebel. He has a mature Jezebel, 100 percent 100 percent And whenever you see somebody operating in homosexuality, that is more than likely a Jezebel spirit. On a serious note, J P. Diddy is operating in the Jezebel spirit. That is what it is. Jezebel got Hollywood on lock. You don't see what's happening in Hollywood? All the all the sexual perversion and homosexuality. Think about it. Even to make it in Hollywood, you have to have sexual hom homosexual activities. Y'all saw Jay-Z, right? Beyonce. I don't know if it's... I saw a quick article. It said that Beyonce is leaving Jay-Z because he got caught up... And those Diddy files, like they, they, he got exposed, and he, she's leaving him. What do you think, like all that is, when they, when they require you to have sex with males, or have, or you have, or you whatever, either whatever way they require it in order for you to get fame? That's a Jezebel spirit. That's a Jezebel spirit. <laughs> what about what do I what do I believe about female pastors? I one hundred percent believe that females can be pastors they can preach they can prophesy they can evangelize all that but i firmly believe that if a woman is a pastor in a ministry she needs to have a male covering i 100 percent believe in that if you ever see a woman that's pastoring preaching whatever it is and you ask her who is your spiritual authority like who is covering you and she does not have a male over her and it's another woman i i, I ain't rocking with it According to the word of God, they 100% need a male covering. I believe that wholeheartedly, 100%. But if you ever see why, well, oh yeah, I don't need a male covering. I don't need, a, nah. Especially when people say they don't, they don't need a covering. When someone's not submitted to somebody, when they're not, when they're not held accountable by somebody, I would run. How can you submit to someone who's not submitted to somebody? I'm submitted to, I have, I have my own spiritual covering, my own spiritual father. I have other mentors. I, I mean, I, I got wise counsel around me because I know without that, I'm going to fall. 
Come on, like the video, man. Like the video. <coughs> what's my <coughs> what's my take on females wearing head coverings in the church? You don't have to wear a head covering. That was for that specific time period. That was a that was an act of submission. That was it's called hermeneutics, right? You got to look at what was going on in that time period, why they were wearing head coverings. The women in the Corinthian church were going crazy. They were worshiping the false god, the princess, the statue Diana. They were rising up against men. It was to the point where Paul had to bring apostolic authority and literally tell them, shut up, stop speaking. Women sit down. I I've studied this. I believe that even in the church that he had women sitting on one side and men sitting on the other side. Women stop talking. You can't speak at all. You need to wear a head covering, men, like no, no, no speaking in tongues unless there's an interpreter. Like he was bringing order to a church that was completely out of order. I'm going to say something. Some of the churches in, in America or in the body of Christ need, need a Paul to come bring order. Because you got women all up in the church wearing them tight, tight jeans, low skirts, showing off their body parts all over. That's wrong, bro. In our church... We believe in you can have swag, you can you can have drip, but but you need to have wisdom. Women and men, even the men too. Men coming with the tight clothes, trying to show off everything and being all no. That's Jesse. If you come into our church and you dressed all crazy and we could and we anyone could discern it, we are gonna give you a shirt, a, a double XL, put it over your body. Here you go. We'll give it to you for free. God bless you. But you ain't you ain't coming into this church looking all crazy. If you're a woman and you, oh, well, I didn't bring no extra clothes. I don't I don't know what to wear. Then you go. We're gonna give you a, a a hoodie. You can wrap it around yourself. There you go. And it's not. I, I'm not misogynistic. This goes for the men too. It goes for the woman, men, whoever it is. You can buy the shirt on the website. We got it on the website. I ain't sitting here saying, oh, you gotta be, you gotta be in a suit and tie and. Looking like you're from the, the like the 1800s or something like that, like like you know what I'm saying, like you don't got to look like an Amish pilgrim. What I'm saying is, you, you you need to have wisdom when you come to the when you come to the house of God, and that's any church. You should be dressed modestly. This is for women and for men. You should not be looking all crazy with tight clothes. You can still have swag. You see my wife. My wife has swag, but she's not dressed like a Jesse. Before she even goes to church, she's making sure she even asks me, babe, what do you think? I'll tell her. Sometimes I tell her no. And it don't even look that crazy, but I say, no, you're not going to be a stumbling block on that stage. And I, I, I tell my, I say, I say what, well, baby, I love you. Change up. She's like, bet. I, I got you. My, my wife, my wife, she, she don't play with that. My wife's from New York and she, she knows how to dress. Of course, it's okay. You can, you can like certain clothing, but when you're, it's, it's seduction. Everyone put in the chat seduction. You can wear a head covering. I don't think wearing a head covering is wrong. Some people like wearing head coverings. You can wear a literal hat. You can put a, a scarf over your uh, thing. You can wear a, a, a long, uh, whatever you want to wear. I don't think it's a problem, but it's not necessary. Paul, Paul, doesn't, Paul doesn't say that it's, that it's necessary. Like if you don't do it, it's a sin. He gives a recommendation. It's called an ordinance. <coughs> I hear people say all the time, what about tattoos and piercings? Very simple. Did you pray to God about it? Why are you getting that piercing and tattoo? Did you ask God? All my tattoos I got in the world. I used to have two earrings. I don't wear them anymore because the Holy Spirit convicted me. He just, now if, if I see, if I, do I have friends that are men of God that wear earrings? Yeah. Does it mean that they're wrong? No. But pray about it. Pray about the earrings and the jewelry. Just pray about it. I wear chains. I have a chain right now. Sometimes I have my gold eagle chain. I wear it. The Lord, does, I don't feel conviction. There's nothing wrong with that. It's wisdom. It's, it's praying to God and asking him what you want to wear. Y'all see it sometimes. Sometimes I'll even wear a suit to church. Sometimes I'll wear some Jordans. It all depends on what the Holy Spirit puts on my heart. But it's wisdom. You see what I'm saying? And we are restocking on a lot more shirts. All right, let's continue. If you're with me, I want you to put a fire emoji and I want I want us to run up the like the likes. How many likes we got right now? I'm gonna check right now. Man, we only got we only got 701 likes. Let's get it to over a thousand. Come on, run up the likes. Run up, run up the likes. Let's go. This is a powerful message that a lot of people need to hear. For real, for real. 
All right. Another sign of a Jezebel spirit hindering. Oh, this is so good. I have my, my sermon right here. Hindering spiritual growth. This is good. The Jezebel spirit hinders spiritual growth by promoting. Oh my gosh, this is so good because I see it so much. By promoting compromise, false teachings, and sinful behaviors. It discourages the pursuit of holiness and righteousness, leading people away from the path of godliness. Revelation chapter 2, verses 20 through 21. Nevertheless, I have a few things about you. Or, I'm sorry. Nevertheless, I have a few things against you. This is Jesus speaking to the church in Thyat Thyatria, right? He said, because you allow that woman Jezebel who calls herself a prophetess to teach and seduce my servants to commit sexual morality and eat things sacrificed to idols. I read it earlier. I'm reading it again. Whenever, okay, let me say this. Ooh, thank you, Jesus. If you ever go to a church and they're allowing girlfriend, boyfriend relationships all up in the church with no repentance, they don't care about it. They let you do your thing. And I'm talking about for the members under the covering, because we have a lot of guests that come to our church. If you saw the last service, I call, I asked, I said, anyone that's dealing with fornication, come to the altar. It was a long line of people, but none of those people are part of the ministry. They're not under the covering. Those were guests from all over the world. Not even one person is under my mentorship or my under my spiritual covering. The Bible says in the book of Hebrews, to submit to a leader who has watch over your soul. It's real. Not one person in that line was part of our ministry, right? But there are many guests who got deliverance and freedom. That line for fornication was longer than the salvation line. That was crazy. There were couples that came up together. So whenever you're in a ministry that does not preach against this, against girlfriend boyfriend relationships fornication and pornography and it, pornography and they're just they're they stray away from it and they don't talk about it they're more than likely as a jezebel spirit operating in that church i'm gonna say it again there is more than more than likely a jezebel spirit operating in that church because look the jezebel spirit needs sexual immorality to be in a church in order for her to have legal right over a church the Jezebel spirit is empowered through sexual immorality. What do I mean by that? Over, let's, for example, over a region like Orlando, a Jezebel spirit cannot operate over the region of Orlando unless there's sin operating in that region that specifies to her that that's 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 her attributes her characteristics homosexuality witchcraft you see a lot of witchcraft in Orlando botanicas everywhere witchcraft stores Disney World all that sex trafficking all up in Orlando that gives that power that principality power over the region to sit on a throne sin and, sin and iniquity is what empowers righteousness holiness is, and holiness is what empowers God is to, to send the angels okay so whenever you're in a church and they don't care about preaching against sexual morality there probably is a Jezebel spirit how many guys how many y'all in here guys and girls women women and men have been to a church where they don't preach against sexual immorality. They don't care. And they allow girlfriend, boyfriend, all, the, all that stuff up in the church. They just have a blind eye to it. They don't say nothing about it. They're just like, whatever. If you've been part of a church like that or been to one, I want you to put a one in the chat. Where you know that the, the church members are all up in sexual morality and the pastor knows it and doesn't care. I've seen it to where even the pastor's daughter is dating another guy in the church or the pastor's son is dating another girl up in the church and they're committing sexual morality and, and they'll just be like, it's okay. Let them do their thing. They're young and, and it's okay. No worries about that. And they'll figure it out. God got them. That is wrong. I've been to churches where I see deacons in sexual immorality with no repentance. Are you crazy? I don't play with that up in this church as the, as, as the apostle, as the senior pastor of this church. It ain't happening. If it's happening, I don't know about it, but I'm going to pray and God, let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. When you're in a prophetic ministry, it gets going to get exposed. If you're on this chat and you're part of the ROC in Central Florida and you know that everything gets exposed in this church, I want you to put a one in the chat. A one in the chat because I'm telling you right now, you can't, you cannot hide that stuff in a prophetic ministry. And guess where Jezebel wants to be at? Prophetic ministries. 
She hates God's prophets. She wants to go into prophetic ministries and turn the people out and enter all the people in the church, the pastors. So how does how does Jezebel work? She'll first go for the she'll first come in and go for the leadership, the prophetic intercessors, the worship team. She goes to the walls of the church that are holding up the church. That's what witches do. What do you think? Which spirit do you think witches are operating in? Put it in the chat. Which spirit do you think witches, I'm talking about willing for witches, are operating in? Put it in the chat. It's obvious. The Jezebel spirit. <coughs> the Jezebel spirit. That's a Jezebel spirit. The witches want to be prophetesses. They have most, more than most witches have a prophetic gift, but Jezebel will take that gift because she wants to be a prophetess and turn it out. Turn that person out and use them. So whenever you see a witch coming into a church or sending witchcraft towards a church, that's that Jezebel spirit sending sending attacks to cause seduction, to cause manipulation and control, to go against the leadership, to bring condemnation, suicide. All the things that you saw Elijah being attacked by, all the things you saw in, in, in the in the temple or you read about in the temple of Baal, all these things are what she wants to cause. If she can turn a church of God into a church of Baal, a, a temple of Baal, she won. See, Jezebel wants to keep the church name. She wants to keep the ministry name. She don't even care if you're if you're preaching Bible. You could be the most anointed preacher in the world. You could be gifted. She don't care as long as people are not repenting. I'm going to say it again. As long as people are not repenting, she don't care. Have a have, show, show, Go ahead, man of God. Go preach what you preach. Cool. As long as your, your flock and your congregation isn't repenting, Everything's cool. Everything's good to go. Have your way. She'll be all up in the church causing this person to sleep with this person, this person to gossip and slander, this person to divide, this person's a whole psychic on the low, this guy over here is sleeping with all these girls. Jezebel ain't tripping. Go ahead, man. Man, I got preach, preach all the Bible you want. But if nobody's repenting, everything's good. Look, I'm going to tell you something right now. A lot of y'all in this chat need to repent. If you need to repent and you're watching this right now, I want you to put a three in the chat. Put a three. Put a three in the chat. If you know you need to repent, put a tr put a three in the chat. Put a three in the chat. Let's see all the threes. If you know if you know you're tripping, and what I'm saying, you know you operating in. Put a three in the chat, and it's okay, because God wants to free you. That's a lot of threes. I hope that y'all feel godly sorrow for real. I hope that y'all have remorse. I hope that y'all know that you're sinning against a holy and righteous God who created you. I hope that you that you understand you're risking hellfire. I hope that you understand that this can curse you and your entire family in the future. I, I hope that you understand that Jezebel wants to kill you. I hope that you understand so that you will truly turn away. And truly repent and turn to God and ask for forgiveness and his blood will wash you. I hope that you have such godly sorrow that you weep like a child, that you cry like a baby, that you're not just going, God, I confess for pornography and I repent and then keep living your life because that ain't repentance. You're saying it from your mouth, but you don't believe it in your heart. I pray that you have godly sorrow beyond measure. I pray that you are crying on your face, on your knees in the secret place saying, God, free me. I don't want this. I don't want to be cursed. I don't want to go to hell. I need you so that God can truly free you. I pray that you have for real remorse because some of y'all putting LOLs in the chat with a three and you think everything's sweet and candy. It's not going to be sweet on judgment day. The Bible talks about a lot of people going to hell because they thought they, because they thought stuff was sweet. The way to hell is broad. The path is broad. A lot of people going to hell. And then some of y'all will say, oh, he's preaching religious. He's preaching too harsh. No, I'm not. I'm preaching the true message of repentance and the remission of sins. If you turn away from your sin, if you turn away from following these things and you turn to Jesus, you'll be washed. But if you don't turn, there's no washing man and woman of God. If you don't turn away, there ain't no washing. No blood's going to wash somebody that don't want to turn away. 
This is not a joke, man. You need to turn away. You need to cry to God and say, God, some of you are having wandering eyes, wa watching girls or guys as they walk by for too long, meditating on it and imagining things you shouldn't. And you think everything's sweet because you ain't watched porn and because you didn't fornicate or commit adultery. I'm telling you right now, those small foxes are going to cause a big fall. Stop playing and repent now. You should be convicted if you look too long for more than two seconds. You should be turning your head. You should be saying, God, forgive me because you should, because that stuff will lead to a whole des destruction. I'm telling you, this is not a joke. Everything I'm telling you, I practice, man and woman of God. I don't play with that stuff. Some of y'all think, oh, I can go to the gym and be looking at girls or guys and everything's cool because I ain't cheating on them, talking to them or watching porn. I'm telling you right now, you keep doing that, it's going to lead to a fall. I'm telling you. Some of y'all need to repent for the little foxes. If you need to repent for the little foxes, I want you to put a five in the chat. Put a five in the chat. If you need to repent for the little foxes, some of y'all need to repent for these little foxes. Put a five in the chat. I'm telling you. Some of y'all little foxed up. You got a whole bunch of foxes in your temple. You need to get delivered. Look at all them fives. My God. Praise God. That's good. You should feel the same godly sorrow for those little foxes just like if you watch porn. You should be in the secret place saying, God, I'm sorry. I, 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 stood, I stared too long. I felt that pool in the spirit, Lord. I felt that pool and I gave into it and I thought it was okay because I'm not watching porn or fornicating and I'm sorry. And ask God to heal you and free you and bring you back to the root of why you're even doing that. I don't, feel, I don't care if you're single or married. Same. Some of y'all thinking because you're single, it's okay. I'm not married. It's harder for me. No, it's not. The Holy Spirit can literally take that feeling from you. He can take that, 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 that lustful feeling from you to the point where you will literally wait till you're married. How do you think Paul went his whole ministry without even a wife, any sex or nothing? Because the Holy Spirit literally gave him a grace so he can go through that throughout his whole ministry. I'm going to say this too, prophetically. Some of y'all are called to be, to be like that, to, 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 not, to never get married and to be single and, and to the day, until the day you die and go to heaven. Praise God. If that's what God has called you to do, it is what it is. It is what it is. Some of y'all probably think I'm crazy for saying what I'm saying. I don't care. It's biblical. I've met people that really, truly, they, that's, that's what God has called them to do. And that's okay. Ain't nothing wrong with that. You got a call in your life. God's going to call you to some to deeper waters. Praise God. Let's like up the let, let's like up the video to 1000 likes. Come on, if everyone on here likes the video one time, we can get to 1000. Right now it's 8:35. I'm going to continue the sermon. Be careful or you will end up in my sermon. That's my, my water glass. Be careful you'll end up in my sermon. <laughs> yeah, Jezebel better be careful, man. All right, let's talk about how to overcome the Jezebel spirit, all right? Number one is discernment through prayer and the word. We must cultivate a spirit of discernment through prayer and immerse ourselves in God's word. This equips us to recognize her tac sorry, her tactic, her tactics and stand against her influence. Hebrews 4:12 For the word of God is living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword piercing even to the division of soul and spirit and of joints and marrow and is, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Let me tell you my brothers and my sisters, if you're not in your word and you're not praying, you won't be able to, you won't be able to overcome the spirit in your own strength. Impossible. It is a relationship. Everyone in the chat, I want you to comment relationship. A relationship is a two-way street. God's grace mixed with your your discipline. If you're not disciplined, God's grace will not abound in your life. You need to pray. You need to worship. You need to go to church. You need to read your word. You need to literally equip yourself and stay in the spirit so that God's grace can abound. And when the two mix together, that's the power of God 
and your and your discipline will allow you to fight these demons daily. And that's any demon. Jezebel, Leviathan, Python, whatever it is, familiar spirits, whatever it is, Freemasonry, all these things. The only way that you're going to be able to overcome any spirit is relying on God. I can't go a day without praying to God. I can't go a day without reading the word. If I don't read, if I don't read a Bible verse or a chapter, man, I get convicted when it's just a verse. If I'm not reading a whole chapter, preparing a sermon, sometimes, actually a lot of times, I prepare sermons that I don't even preach. I have messages in my phone. I have hundreds, probably uh, almost a thousand sermons in my phone that I've prepared and some of them I haven't even preached. I just, as I'm listening to a sermon, watching a video, reading the word, get a revelation, whatever it is, I will go and prepare a sermon so that I can, so that I'm teaching myself with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit and my discipline will come together and teach a powerful teaching to me so that I can have revelation. And that's how I keep my mind continuously renewed. I pray all throughout the day. I don't even know what it feels like to go a day without prayer. I think, I don't even know how, what, I, what would happen. To not pray for a day. That's crazy to me. That's crazy. We have 24 hours in a day. You can't give God an hour a day? You can't give God two, a 10%? Let's just say two hours a day? 30 minutes? The Bible says it's not by our might and our strength, but it's by the spirit of the Lord. So when you try to do things in your own might and strength, you're going to get God. You want to overcome that spirit of Jezebel? You're going to have to get in your word and pray daily. This is a commitment. Some of y'all gave your life to Christ and you thought, oh, I gave my life to Christ and that's it. I don't got to do nothing else. No, you surrendered your life to Jesus Christ. You died under that water and now you're risen a new creation. You are now submitted to the lordship of Jesus Christ. He is your Lord now. He is your master. He is your boss. He is your commander and someone who's your boss you follow just like this like your job some of y'all go to a job and you work and you listen to your supervisor because if you don't you'll get fired and lose that paycheck that person is your master and your lord with a lowercase l and a lowercase m but jesus is the uppercase l lord of lords master of masters boss of bosses king of kings alpha omega Beginning and the end. So if you know that Jesus is the almighty and all powerful, you're going to seek him daily as such. If you go to work for eight hours a day for a paycheck and you don't give God one hour a day, how dare you? No wonder you're getting attacked. No wonder you're following the sexual immorality. No wonder you're following, you're following to pornography. No wonder you can't understand how I preach the way I do and, 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 and it doesn't make sense to you. No, no wonder you want a lukewarm church where there's a whole bunch of religion. And I feel this prophetically for a man of God on this, specifically a man of God on here. Fukarabato Ramando. Men of God, you need to use wisdom. Especially for, for any men of God that be out there evangelizing. You, you need to use wisdom. I go to men and to women of God to evangelize. But when I go to women, I'm very strategic on how I move. Very strategic. Some You, you see my videos. A lot of times I'll pray for a woman. I won't even touch them because I don't want to touch them. Because I know what spirit they're dealing with. You better be careful, especially when you start playing offense in the kingdom of God. When you start going towards the devil and saying, I'm going to take souls from your kingdom. You don't think you're a target. You don't think the devil knows your weak points. I've met men of God who are mighty evangelists who continuously fall to pornography because they don't have wisdom when they, when, in, in their walk. They don't have balance. They have the anointing to evangelize. They ain't doing nothing in the secret place. They're not using wisdom when they evangelize. They're getting all these touches and everything, bro. I'm telling you, you better be careful letting these women touch you. You better be very careful. You got to be real with yourself when you, when you go out there to reach the lost. You go out there to reach the lost and, 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 and they start, that Jezebel spirit going to come up to you and say, oh, how you doing? You're such a mighty man of God. You're so amazing and try to seduce you. And then the minute you start feeling in your stomach that you like it, 
I'm going to say it. I'm going to be real. The minute you feel in your stomach that you like it, you got God. You better go home and pray after that encounter and you better ask the Lord for forgiveness and say, God, I don't want that feeling no more. The enemy's all around watching us, waiting for a petition. So the minute you start going out there trying to trying to trying to plummet the kingdom of darkness, shoo, you a super target. We gotta learn defense before we learn offense, bro. That's, that's, that's a bar. In the kingdom of God, we gotta learn defense before we learn offense. If you're not living a lifestyle of holiness, of prayer, of fasting, of worship, of fellowship, bro, I'm telling you, that Jezebel, that, 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 that Jezebel ain't tripping up with you evangelizing. I'm telling you, I'm telling you this as a as a man of God who loves to evangelize. I'm telling I'm, what I'm telling you. I've been through. I'm not telling you this because oh, I, I'm, I'm not sitting here saying I'm perfect. No, I've been through this in Christ, where I'm evangelizing to a woman and then they start to compliment me and say all these things and it's a good bro, it's a good looking woman. You know when someone's attractive. It ain't demonic to know someone's attractive. And then I'm sitting there like, and I and I feel like the pool. And I, I, and, I, and, I'm, and I start smiling like, oh, thank you so much. And I get in my car and I begin to cry and say, God, I'm sorry. This happened early on in my walk when I was evangelizing. My early stages of the, of the evangelism life. And I go home and I pray and I say, I'm so, oh God, I'm so sorry. And I talk to my wife about it. I've talked, I've spoken to my wife about all these things where she lays hands on me and prays for me. Me and my wife have an intimate relationship where we talk about these things on both sides. This ain't a joke. Stop playing with stop playing with the devil, man. And this is for women too, for the woman evangelist. Bro, I'm telling you, the woman, I've seen videos with women evangelists out there and they're always going to men. Always going to men. Always going to the men that they're attracted to. And you could just tell. And it's real lustful, real like, you could just, you could feel it. Like they're not evangelizing to evangelize or they're doing it because they, they, because they want attention. Be very careful. Be very careful. How many of y'all feel convicted? Put a one in the chat. That's beautiful. I want to talk about for pastors, what can you do to resist the, De the Jezebel spirit from your church? Again, upholding the authority of God's word and firmly establishing pastoral authority can allow an environment that resists the Jezebel spirit. You have to lead with you have to lead with, with humility, integrity, boldness, and dependence on the Holy Spirit. Look at this, first Peter five. Like I said earlier, the elders who are among you I exhort. I who am a fellow, a fellow elder and a witness to the sufferings of Christ and also a partaker of the glory that will be revealed, shepherd the flock of God, which is among you, serving as overseers, not by compulsion, but willingly, not for dishonest gain, but eagerly, not nor as being lords over those entrusted to you. But being examples to the flock, First Peter five one through three, pastors and elders are called to be examples. So how can pastors keep that spirit out the church? Preach the word of God, preach the gospel, preach repentance, preach against sexual immorality. God is not sending the youth to this ministry for no reason. Why do y'all think so many young people are getting saved at the Rock? It's because God can trust that this ministry. Is going to preach the true message, the true gospel of Jesus Christ. And that's why in a lot of churches, you don't see souls being saved. You, the altar car is the same people coming up to just get prayer, but you're not seeing people come to the house of God to get freedom, healing, and salvation. When you don't see that in a church, Jezebel more than likely is all up in the church. She don't want to see souls saved. She wants to see souls bound. You'll see that in a lot of these churches, the compromise is crazy. I've seen some of these mega preachers, I'm not going to name no names, these mega church preachers that are in complete compromise. Some of them are at the ditty parties, bro. It's crazy. It's crazy. And you wonder what's operating is the spirit of Jezebel. And a lot of these preachers and men of God and women of God, when they're rising up, they're, they're very pure. They're on point. And then the small foxes come in, they compromise, and then Jezebel gets them. Jezebel wants them to keep, stay as a preacher, stay as a preacher, man of God. Stay right there, man of God. She ain't tripping. 
She ain't tripping. Yeah, the Christian rappers, you see it all up in the Christian rap community. They got they they got the gift to preach. They can they can preach and all that stuff. Or or to or they, they got the gift to make music, but there's no anointing. You can tell they're real lustful. Behind the scenes, they're over there smoking dope. Bro, some of these Christian rappers are on yacht smoking dope, getting drunk, messing with women. And it's some of those same Christian rappers and you're downloading their music. Boy, it's crazy out here in these in, in the kingdom of God. I'm telling you, even some of these worshipers, I've seen some of these worshipers go from purity and they switch up and they start doing worldly music, got people twerking all up in their videos in the name of I'm trying to win souls. So they mix with the darkness, man, that is compromised, that is demonic and you need to repent. Be careful who you listen to. There's a spirit behind what you listen to. I'm telling you. It's not about the sound. It's about the spirit behind the sound. These, these worldly people, I'm telling you, some of y'all are listening to worldly music and they're doing rituals over these music. They got pentagrams, having orgies and doing all types of sacrifices in these pentagrams where the, and then they go do music in the same studio. It's real, bro. You think this thing is a joke? And then the song sounds good to you, but there's a spirit behind it. All of a sudden, you're listening to this music. Everything's cool. And now all of a sudden, you're getting real seductive. You're getting real, real lustful, angry. You're getting real murderous. All of, you're like, man, what's going on? And I hear this all the time. You can listen to worldly music. It's okay. As long as you don't go do what it's saying, you can like it. Yeah, right. I don't agree. Cap, false, demonic. Some of y'all need to repent of listening to that worldly music because you're, you're allowing those curses and spirits to enter you. I'm telling you right now is the time to repent. If you need to repent of listening to worldly music, I want you to put the word repent in this chat. I'm going to say it again. If you need to repent of listening to worldly music, I need you to put repent in this chat right now. Some of y'all say even, even at the gym. Of course, even at the gym. If I go to a gym and I don't got headphones on and they're playing worldly music, I'm drowning it out. I ain't listening to it. I'm straight. Wow, it's a lot of repentance. Man, stop listening to that worldly music, man. You know, you know what I do sometimes? Because I, I know what some of y'all are saying. Oh, there's not too much good music. There is a lot of good Christian music. You just gotta you gotta you gotta you gotta look, you gotta seek and you'll find. But I'll tell you this. What I do a lot, I was actually working out yesterday, right? I was with some of the pastors, we were out there hooping, but before we went to go hoop, we were um we were working out. They had the the, the park we go to, they got these pull-up bars, like a whole pull-up station with a, like a dip dip bars and dips are like for your triceps, all that. We were working out. I just put on a on a on a on a on a instrumental. I put on an instrumental, a rap instrumental, and we were just we were just working out to an instrumental. That's cool with me. But there ain't no there ain't no words getting deposited into my spirit to mess me up. It ain't happening. I'm telling you, be careful what you listen to. And there's a lot of great music out there, man. I love, I love worship music. I love me some worship music. Someone said, is Christian rap holy or hypocrite? Man, it could be, it's holy. It's about the Lord. Reli man, people need to get out of religion for real. This whole thing about Christian rap is demonic. That's crazy to me. That's crazy. If to, for you to think that because someone's doing Christian rap is demonic, boy, anything... Bro, anything that, that that that's like saying me going to Target's demonic. I shouldn't go to Target. So Target's t Target is ran by Freemasonries. It's okay for me to go to Target. It's okay for me to wear, you know, Walmart. I, so I, I, so every clothing item and everything I do, I got to make sure that it, it's it's from a Christian. That's that's how you become one of those Amish people. That one of those cults. That's weird. Stop. That's religious. God God is the one who creates. The devil perverts. So when you listen to, to hip hop and it's about God and they're praying over the music and there's an anointing to it, it's powerful. We're taking hip hip hop rap, we're taking it back from the devil. That's what we're doing. That's why I do Christian rap is to reach the lost. That's why we do worship. That's why we do all that is to reach the lost. And we're about to be putting out a lot more music, a lot of artists coming out soon with Remnant Music Records. If you haven't checked it out, go download my new EP, Sanctified on all music platforms. It's fire. I ain't gonna lie. And I'm not just saying it because I did it 
or because I, I it's my album. I'm, I'm saying it because the Holy Spirit is the one who created it. A lot, a lot of albums. I, I put all that music out for y'all, man. Look, I know the Christian uh, in Christian the Christian community is small. It's not a lot of people. I know there's more worldly people, but I ain't tripping. I've had a lot of worldly people compliment the rap. A lot of worldly people, and that's my goal is to reach the lost. I want worldly people to start bumping Christian rap because it's that good. That's my job. If you listen to the album Sanctified, I want you to put put a uh, uh, the 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 dove emoji in the chat. Put the dove emoji. If you listen to it and you rock with it, put the dove emoji. Praise God. Yeah, man. Go go download all the all the EPs, albums, singles. We're putting out music regularly, regularly. Hey, come on. You can if you haven't downloaded it right now, you can go download it. Maria and Hugh put it in the chat. Go download it. All right, let's continue. <coughs> the last way that we can, in the body of Christ, how we can keep Jezebel out of the church, and I love this because at The Rock, we do this. Listen, promoting unity and accountability. Fostering unity and accountability within the church is crucial to combating the Jezebel spirit by promoting a culture of love, transparency and submission to God's word. Pastors can protect the church from the division and manipulation. Ephesians four. I, therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you to walk worthy of the calling with which you were called with all lowliness and gentleness, with long suffering, bearing one another in love, endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit and the bond of peace. Again, the unity of the spirit and the bond of peace. We got to stay tight knit. You see the rock here in Central Florida. We're so close as a family. We fellowship. We have, you know, we just had a softball tournament. We have barbecues, marriage ministry, singles ministry. Uh, 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 cooking ministry, homeless ministry. What we have like I think there's all, um, over twenty ministries within within the center, and we we are family. We stay we stay together. Everybody knows everybody. We're we're, we're tight knit. So Jezebel can't come up in the church and, and and have a field day. She gonna get exposed. She gonna get exposed. We're unified. We love each other. We got a prophetic intercessory group that's on fire. We're praying daily. We're fasting. We're together corporately. And we keep that witch out the church. So when someone tries to come and bring that division, oh, they're getting exposed ASAP, quick. Not, not taking long. Not taking long. And that's what pastors need to promote in the church. They need to promote unity, togetherness. Like, hey, come on, guys. Like, I'm telling you, man, when it's just when it's when it's one of those churches where you just come on Sunday and that's it. And, and, and they don't they're not, they don't know you and you don't know nobody, but you feel good because the the, the 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 music sounds good and there's lights and smoke, even though there's no problem with that, because we got fog light or fog smoke and we got lights and, you know, there's nothing wrong with that. But if that's the only time that you are with your, your church family, oh, I don't know about that. That's not good. That's not good. How can anything be exposed? You got to get to know people. And trust me, we will. If you come to this ministry, we're going to get to know you. <laughs> We're an army. Yeah, people think the world is ending because of the eclipse. Hey, people, people need to focus more on the cross than the, than, than the eclipse. Y'all need to focus more on the cross than the eclipse. If you're more interested in the eclipse than the cross, you tripping. That's idolatry. Repent. Learn about the cross. So yeah, Jesus over Jezebel, go get it. We're selling it online. We're going to be selling it in person. We're actually, start smashing the like button. I'm going to say a prayer. If y'all want me to pray over you guys real quick, put a fire emoji. Put a fire emoji. I'm going to pray over you guys. Put a fire emoji. If y'all want me to pray. Let me see the live real quick on my phone. What we at? How many likes? We're at nine hundred eighty-six. Let's get it to a thousand, and then I'll, and then I'll pray. We'll, we'll get into prayer. Start liking it up. Start liking it up. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give. Uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give you guys an opportunity to sow into the ministry. We got a lot of things coming up. A lot of things coming up. And I'm going to give you all an opportunity. The Bible says how you give is how you'll be given to, right? Fast in private, give in private, pray in private. And when you do those things, you'll be rewarded openly by the Lord. If this message blessed you, if you appreciate this message, 
If you want to sow onto the ministry and what we're doing for the kingdom of God, saving souls, casting out demons, healing the sick, expanding the kingdom of God, preaching purity, holiness, repentance. If these things blessed you and you know that that you know it's 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 something that you want to sow onto for those who 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 God has given the means to give, ask the Holy Spirit what He wants you to you know to give to the ministry. I'm gonna give y'all an opportunity to give. I'm gonna be back in like two or three minutes. Stay on the call or on the Zoom. Not the Zoom, the podcast, because I'm going to be praying for y'all right after this, all right? I love y'all. Hold on. I'll be right back.
What's up? What's up, family? I am back. Can y'all see me? Can y'all hear me? Put a fire emoji if y'all can hear me. Come on. Put a, put a, put a fire emoji if y'all can hear me. What's up, family? What's up, family? I put a fire emoji. All right. We're going to get right into this. I'm going to pray for y'all, but again, like I said, this weekend, this weekend, family, Saturday, I want y'all to come pull up. Some of y'all need, some of y'all need to come in person and get delivered for real. Some of y'all need to come in person to get delivered for real. Some of y'all need hands laid on y'all, counseling, you need to be part of the sermon. Hey, if you're coming in person this Saturday, I want you to put a one in the chat. Some of y'all need to fly in. Some of y'all live overseas in a different city or state. There's an anointing over this ministry to cast out demons, especially that Jezebel spirit. Come pull up. It's worth it. I'm telling you. Whoever's coming in person, put a one in the chat. You need to come. If you've been thinking about it, you need to come. I'm telling you, it's worth it. Make sure you do it the right way. Don't get fired for your job to come. No. No. Take off work. Some of y'all are planning a vacation and y'all want to use your vacation to go to to another to, to Hawaii or Puerto Rico or something like that. And there's nothing wrong with that. But my brothers and my sisters, why not take a vacation to Central Florida and get some deliverance and healing and give your life to Jesus? How beautiful would that be? Come through, get a hotel, get a get a rental car, get an Airbnb, whatever you got to get. Make sure you do it. Make sure you do it. With wisdom, don't just come out here without no money and be like, oh, you know, no, don't do that. Pray about it. God is a God of order. I want to see y'all. This Saturday is going to be powerful, man. It's going to be good. It's going to be a mass deliverance. So I'm going to pray for you guys real quick. For all of you that watch this live and you know you, you, and you know you need to repent, I want you to put a one in the chat because we're going to go through repentance real quick. I want y'all to repent. Some of y'all need to give your life back to Jesus. Repent, repent, repent. It's Saturday at 6.30 p.m. The doors open. We start worship at 7 p.m. Pull up. Okay. That's a lot of people that need to repent. Okay, cool. So we're going to go We're gonna go through a prayer together. I'm not there. I don't know if you truly mean it. Repeat after me prayers mean nothing if you don't believe it in your heart. But if you believe it in your heart, they mean something for real. So I want y'all to really repent because the Bible says that you must believe, repent. You must believe and repent. But if you're not repenting, you cannot be saved. The deliverance won't happen because you don't break the legal right of the enemy. Hey, Berean, if you could put the uh, the uh, if you can pin the address and take off the Jesus over Jezebel shirt pin, y'all can go check that out. The address. We're located in Apopka, Florida. He's about to put the address and pin it in the chat. All right, y'all ready? I want y'all to repeat after me. Actually, that that same website is actually where you can go to find the directions. Make sure you go to that website. You guys see it pinned at the top? <coughs> if you guys see it pinned at the top, put a, put a one in the chat real quick. All right. And then I want you guys to do a, a repeat after me prayer, all right? I want you to repeat after me. I want y'all to, if you're, if you're about to pray and you know you need to repent and you need, you need, to give, you need, you need freedom and all that, I want you to just close your eyes and focus on the Lord. Focus your heart, your mind on the Lord. Close your eyes. Just focus on him and his presence. Just don't worry about this chat. Don't look at the chat. Just put your phone down. Some of you need to actually put your phone down. Put your phone down and just close your eyes. Put your hands down. Relax wherever you're at, at your job, and your car, wherever you're at. Okay? This is two minutes. Now, I want you all to say this out loud. You can whisper it. You can say it out loud. Whatever you got to do. Just life and death is in the power of the tongue and out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaks. When you, when you're say, when you say it out loud, it, it's, there's something about when you say something out loud because the Bible says to confess it from your mouth. Believe in your heart. So I want you all to say this. Say, Jesus. Repeat after me. Say, Jesus, I believe that you died on the cross. You were buried and you rose in the third on the third day. Say it. And you rose on the third day. Say, I repent of following sin. Say, I repent of practicing sin. 
and I turn to you, Jesus, for forgiveness. Say, forgive me, God. Now I want you guys to confess out loud the things that you know you've been doing that are wrong. Fornication, pornography, smoking, drinking, whatever it is. I want you to say it out loud, the things you need to repent of. Say it out loud. Come on. Say it out loud. Say it out loud. Look at Je Jezebel already manifesting in the chat. <laughs> oh, man. Right? Don't worry about it, uh, nitties. That's, just, that's, that's a Jezebel spirit. She mad because it's people about to get saved. Y'all ready? Now, I want you to say this. Say, Jesus, thank you that you forgive me by your blood. Say it out loud. Say, I forgive everybody who's hurt me. Say, I let go of all of it. Say, Jesus, fill me with your spirit. Say, Jesus, fill me with your spirit. All right, you're ready. Keep your eyes closed. I'm going to pray. I pray right now in the name of Jesus, Holy Spirit, that you would fill them right now. They believe in your death, burial, and resurrection. They've repented. They've turned away. Jesus, I pray that you would deliver them. They've repented. Holy Spirit, right now, I pray that you touch them, that you fill them. Thank you that their heart is being transformed right now. Change the desires of, your, of their heart, Lord, I pray. I want you, as I'm praying, I want you guys to open up your heart, receive this message. Keep your eyes closed. Just receive the message. I pray, Holy Spirit, that you would that you would fill their entire soul. I pray that you would drive out devils right now. Every demonic spirit, I command you to come up and come out right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Everything leave in the name of Jesus Christ. Everything come up and come out now. I even pray for healing over the body. Some of y'all are dealing with diabetes, high blood pressure, back pain, knee pain, headaches. Some of y'all are dealing with anxiety. Some of y'all are dealing with depression and suicide. I command every demon causing infirmity and any type of demonic spirit causing torment in the soul or in the flesh to come up and come out now. I bind every unclean spirit in Jesus' name. Come up and come out now and go to the abyss. Go to the pit. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, every Jezebel spirit, every Ahab spirit, come up and come out now in Jesus' name. I command every altar of bow to be destroyed right now by fire. Father, I pray that you would deliver every unclean spirit right now, every python spirit, leviathan sp spirit. Come up and come out now in the name of Jesus Christ. If you feel something in your body moving, put your hand right where you feel it, right where you feel it. And I'm going to pray right now in Jesus' name everything come up and come out now in jesus name some of y'all are going to begin to cough throw up cry shake let it go let it come up and come out don't try to stop it come up and come out now in jesus name up and come out now up and out now in the name of jesus christ everything go everything go if you're standing in agreement with me i want you guys to pray in the spirit pray in the holy ghost for our brothers and sisters to get freed in the name of jesus christ every demonic spirit come up and come out jezebel i send the hounds on you i send the dogs on you i command you to loose god's people right now in jesus name right now the hounds of heaven loosed on every jezebel spirit every generational curse broken every demonic covenant right now is is voided by the blood of jesus christ every demonic altar and the bloodline shattered in jesus name right now fear go pride go lust go sexual immorality go every incubus and succubus spirit in the name of jesus christ and every spirit under the umbrella of sexual immorality i bind you come up and come out now in jesus name out in the name of jesus leave their stomach come off their back leave their mind leave their head leave their, their, their head leave their chest in jesus name you cannot hide in the arms or the legs come up and come out now in the name of jesus christ amen i'm gonna pray some more i feel that too in the name of Jesus Christ, everything come up and come out now. Up and out now in the name of Jesus Christ. Up and out now in the name of Jesus Christ. Up and out now in the name of Jesus Christ. Up and out now in the name of Jesus Christ. I break every unhealthy soul tie that anyone's been dealing with, with any person they slept with or pornography. I break it in the name of Jesus Christ. Up and out now in the name of Jesus Christ. Some of you are crying, let it out through those tears. Some of y'all are throwing up, let it out. Coughing up, let it out, it's real. Some of y'all are feeling literally, physically, it leaving your body. Let it go in Jesus' name. Up and out in the name of Jesus Christ. Up and out in the name of Jesus Christ. Freedom in the name of Jesus Christ. Everything leave in the name of Yeshua. Everything come up and come out now. By the power of the Holy Ghost, by the grace of the Lord. Thank you, Lord, for your power. 
everything leave in Jesus Christ's name. Every spirit of witchcraft that's been tormenting them, I command you to come off their head, leave their body. Every squid spirit that's been tormenting their mind, leave and loose from them in the name of Jesus Christ. Every octopus spirit, leave in Jesus' name. Every spirit that's been causing that's been causing deception. Any spirit that's that's entangled anyone through a false prophet, through someone teaching them false doctrines that lead them away from Jesus and into sexual immorality, I rebuke that spirit of sexual perversion. Come up and come out and offer them in Jesus' name. Anything that's been that came in through false teaching, Lord, I pray, Holy Spirit, that you would uproot those demonic seeds and every unclean spirit would come up and come out. Lord, I pray that you open up the eyes of understanding for your people, according to the book of Ephesians. Enlighten them, illuminate the eyes of their understanding, Lord. Their eyes, plural, not the demonic eye, not the not the penal gland, not the third eye. I'm talking about your eyes of understanding. And anyone that believed in that third eye stuff from witchcraft, right now I command that spirit of divination to come out of you in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, I pray for Father God, that they their, their eyes of their, their eyes of understanding would be enlightened. Father, that they would that, that it be open and that they would see what you want them to see, Lord. That they would understand what you want them to understand. Let them have ears to hear, ears, ears to hear, and eyes to see. In Jesus' name, and the spiritual, Amen and Amen. Hallelujah, Hallelujah, Hallelujah. Come on, if you just got freedom, like if you literally felt a supernatural, you know, manifestation. Of God's power and demons coming out I want you to put a one in the chat Put a one I felt the anointing come over me as I began to pray Put a one in the chat Hallelujah Look at all those ones Praise God man Come on Come on Look at that Hallelujah. Hey, moderators, I want you to block um, Jorge, please. Someone said one of these seducing females approached the front of my car when you were praying. Hey, it be like that. Enemy going to send people. It's all good. Yawning definitely can mean deliverance for sure. If you need self deliverance is real too. Keep command if you if you still need more deliverance, command them to come out. Hey, I want to see y'all this Saturday. I want to see y'all pull up. Some of y'all are considering it. Some of y'all are like, man, should I come? Yes, you should come. I'm gonna be preaching on that spirit, exposing her Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday this week. So make sure y'all join every day. This week is about to get real. Someone, some of y'all threw up. Your conviction is on point. It's not me. It's the Holy Ghost. It's an anointing. Repentance. If, 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 you, if you guys threw up, if you threw up, like literally threw up as I was praying, I want you to put uh, the number four in the chat so I know. If you coughed up, put a three. Yes, it will be live streamed. All our services are live streamed. But it's something about being in person. I'm telling you. Wow. Look at all those fours and threes. Wow. 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 Come on, Jesus. Come on, Jesus. Come on, Jesus. If you guys want to join what we're doing, we have the Remnant Revival Outreach Center International on school. You guys can join that community. And if you want to be part of what we're doing digitally, where you have more intimate, you know, um, one on one with me, because we have... um a smaller community for the Leadership School of Revival. You can also join that. We actually have the Leadership School of Revival tonight. We're actually going to be live streaming it on YouTube again. So like in the next five hours, I'm going to be live streaming that. And we're going to also be live streaming it. Um, you know, you guys are going to see they're going to be on Zoom. They, they you know, I, I counsel them. I hold them accountable. I disciple them. There's assignments, different things. We got one, we got a, we got a leadership course up right now. There's more that are going to be coming. And we just, and they're under the covering of the ministry, you know, they're supporting what God's doing through the rock internationally. They're being held accountable. I definitely believe that when it comes to being part of a covering, um, you need to honor the covering. You need to be, you know, be involved in, in anything that you can, especially because if you're not in person, especially if you're not in person, you need to join online. Um, and the way to do that is through the Leadership School of Revival for sure. It's called the LSOR. 
It's definitely worth it. Trust me. If you're part of the LSOR, I want you to put LSOR in the chat so I know it's you. I seen the call on there. Who else is on there? Man, God is so good. Look at all the LSOR. What's up, y'all? God bless you guys, man. See you guys tonight. Make sure to be on Zoom. Five o'clock. I'll put the Zoom link in the LSOR um chat at uh four forty five. God bless you guys. Love you guys. Man, I want to see this church packed out on Saturday so a lot of people can get delivered. I'm telling you, fly in. It's going to be powerful. We're preparing for Saturday. It's going to be a powerful service. I'll still be preaching tomorrow. Tomorrow on how to overcome lust, on how to overcome um, pornography, you know, all that stuff. I'm, I'm going to be teaching you guys how to overcome that. I'll still be. I'll still be on tomorrow for Exposing Jezebel Part 2. Part 2. So make sure you guys join tomorrow and um, around the same time. And man, yeah, God is so good, man. Love you guys. God bless you guys. In Jesus' mighty name. And if you can't join in person, keep the ministry and prayer for Saturday. Some of y'all, if y'all want to be part of what God's doing here in the spirit, fast and pray this week for Saturday service. We need all the prayer all the prayer warriors on deck. All of y'all, man, for real, because it's going to be a powerful move of God. God bless you guys. We are living in the last hour. This stuff is crazy, man. We're in a time where things are going, man, I'm telling you, it's crazy nowadays. And if you want to get a Jesus over Jezebel shirt, you can check it out on, um, on the website. Love you guys. God bless you guys. In Jesus' mighty name.